start for some reason. The betrayal one? Anyway, hey, hey. Did I not hey, send it to you? Hey, buddy, it's Monster Camp. I'm sure you did. Uh, I feel like you should, should have it still. Just wanted to, uh, yeah. Here with, uh, dragging myself into place. Mm -hmm. There we go. Hey, everybody, it's Monster Camp. Uh, hey. <laughs> playing games. Why were we late today, Steven? Uh, because I was on a different stream yeah. until uh, about three with minutes whom, ago. With whom, Steven? Uh, the Schmuck Squad. <laughs> with, with whom? We're playing Halo with the Schmuck Squad. Also, oh, Swiss, Swiss oh, just your, uh... okay, all right, okay, with the Schmuck Squad. With the, 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 I'm you sorry, as you were you saying. You motherfuckers never play Halo say, with me. Swissy... Uh, you still have Magic Bridge oh! labeled as your Twitch thing. You never play Halo with him. You don't. <laughs> what? Except we explicitly did, like, last Monday. Yeah, and I wanted to play it more. Bitch. I was bored, and it was the only thing I could think to do. Anyway. <laughs> mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, I can't wait to see oh. how... Oh, the, the facial rig just gave up on that one. Oh, it, it tried. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love uh, watch, watching the eyes, because they just go crazy. Ah, uh, Camp it's Spooky. It's so good. The stage of some of our dearest summer... Ah, uh, you know what? It's because I don't have my light turned on. There. Go do that. Now I should be able also, to Also, I posted in Mod Games, Swiss, you need to switch your thing from Magic Bridge to Studio Magica in your profile. What? Come on. I'm adjusting my light. Something about your Discord profile? Swissy, okay. as he posted it. It's not dire to the stream, but sure. I We're tell you what is like dire. For weeks now. <laughs> as, <laughs> as he's just been like fucking taking notes. He's like, I gotta tell him this time. And then another day, I like, ah, oh, fuck. Son I gotta bitch. tell him. All right, I think I'm. Go oh. oh, I see what has happened here. I see what's happening here. Happening, yeah. All right. You're face to face with greatness, and it's rage. strange. Thank you for the rage, Schmuck Squad. You don't even know how you feel. Oh, it's, it's your friends from the Schmuck Squad. <laughs> I like how high pitched your voice. I gets. can have other friends, Swissy. <laughs> oh, look, oh, look at the star. I've got all these friends <laughs> over here. Look at this. I've got a Look at all your friends. <laughs> look at this fucker. Oh my god. Who? Ah. <laughs> uh, anyway. Bullying. Ah, Camp Spooky, the stage of some of our dearest summers. Back then we were young and unafraid. With school far away, everything afraid. seemed possible as the Fucking sun embraced purple. us on our ways to camp. Summer has that distinct power, doesn't it? You live for the days while the nights inebriate you with possibilities. It's like mm. life could take a turn at every corner. Including whatever corner Boko's microphone is currently turning into over and over again. <laughs> it's turning into poggers. Poggers. Oh, stop. Hey, Mala guy. Hi, Mala guy. Hey, Mala guy. Hey, Mala Mala guy. guy. And everybody else. And for us, yeah, we, gotta, we gotta be specific to Mala guy because he's got so many badges. Anyways, Look at that. Characters. VIP. Yeah, I'm leaving it. B B B Biff. Biff. <laughs> Biff. <laughs> Biff. Okay, there we go. Biff. Okay, gotcha. What? Right. I, I love uh, what's, tomato what's, biff. What's gonna be your starting <laughs> items? Lemon biff. Oh, they're starting items? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah dude. It just gives you starting stats, items. basically. You so we've ones. got the flashback light, stuff. we've got dragon heat, coral comb, chest two, hellfire portable barbecue, pinata pool toy, pocket therapist, lemonade dakimakara, and griffin pasta. Delicious. Oh, Who are you gonna go for this time, Steven? Uh, maybe I'll try Joy. So, I don't actually know what she'll want. Do the comb. Oh. Probably Charm. Yeah, it makes sense to me. Charm and Smart, maybe. Do the flashback oh. light. Chest 2 would be good for, for that, then. Yeah, you're right. Okay, who wants that to be next? Who wants player 2? I'm yellow. Okay, Josh said that Josh is the only one to say something, so he's player 2. Josh. Josh, do you want to be called George. something else aside from Josh? Do you want to be no. Josh or just Josh? Josh. Okay. Desi! Come on! I just silly want to, I just want to Go, on, come on, Desi! Also be All right. big so, two. we've got uh, Bootleg Juan, we've got Spooky Campfire Stories, The Spork, uh, Blade Blade, Miss MC Griffin EP. <laughs> the Blade Blade does appear to have be a Beyblade with a knife taped to it. Yeah, it is. That's exactly uh, what it is. Build Blade. your own golem, pinata pool toy, pocket therapist, cult ring. 
Hmm. Well, I'm going for Dahlia, obviously. So, Bold, probably. probably want Bay, Bay Blade, the Blade, I imagine. Blade. The or Blade, Blade Blade. There's the Blade Blade. Yeah. Hmm, what else is bold? Uh, bold. Cold Ring, maybe? Perhaps. Mm, I don't know about that one. I mean, being maybe the cult is dangerous. The maybe spork. spork. Give me the spork. Spork. The spork was bold. Oh, that is that <laughs> for is some bold. reason. <laughs> all right, all right, good, good, good. What are, what are my options again? Uh, maybe got... the spooky campfire stories. Makes sense to me. Yeah, what? yeah. Give me that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. There you go. All right. Who's next? Uh, my God. Uh, okay. <laughs> Boko's next then. Yeah, sure. Boko, do you just want to be Boko? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Do you want to be Boko or do you want to be something else? Okay, we've got fake noble title. We've got uranium lipstick, griffin pasta, build your own golem, magic mirror, very strong insect repellent, Sudoku Rubik's Cube. Oh no, I hate it. I hate that. Sock puppet and penguin mask. Um, let me see. Boko opens her guide. Maybe. Let's see. I mean, I would do the same thing. Oh, no, no, the guides no, no. still aren't good. Tr trust me, I also reference Boko's guide. I just do it vicariously. <laughs> what, through me. <laughs> through Boko, uh, I access the, the knowledge. Okay. <laughs> the thought of um, the okay, babe, what's the... really getting me. <laughs> what, so what's the, what was the one at the, up at the top? Fake noble title. Okay, next one. Uranium lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, take the uranium lipstick. Cause that's, that's cool. What's that? Is that munch? What is that next one? <laughs> uh, Griffin, Griffin pasta. pasta. Oh. Oh yeah, sure. Give me that one. Sure. Uh, what? Is... Are you yeah, just sure. trying to find the bold ones? Does your lady also what? need bold? I think so. Uh, ba what's the third ba one in that middle row? In very strong insect repellent. Yeah, give me that one, too. Almost certainly okay. that one. All right, and then this one will be Swissy. Do you want to be Swissy? Uh, Greg. This Greg. one will be Greg. Greg. The fastest one G or two? On YouTube. Three Sorry, two, two Gs or three? Three, three, three Gs. Oh, that's a good point. How many Gs do you want? How many Gs do well, you want? Well, there's already two Gs by default. So, so I think two I'm or good. three? Three? Four. Four, four Gs. Gs. Give two. Three. Motherfucker. Yeah, Four Gs. There we go. 5G LTE. Um, sure. You've got a Final answer. <laughs> You've got a recorder. I don't book, know what any of this Book of does. orgy <laughs> etiquette. Sketchbook. Marshmallows. Satanist kit. They randomly no, bumped no, no, two stats. No, no, no. So sorry. Marshmallows. Marshmallows. Yeah, yeah they're bones. Marsh Satanist marrows. kit. Sleeping beauty bag. Swole... Swole floaties. <laughs> Sudoku oh, hey, that's from hipster Spongebob. costume. So yeah, it's basically you can kind of try to guess what two stats they probably raise. <laughs> and pick those. Like I specifically went for bold ones because I'm gonna try to date Dahlia again. Dahlia. Right. And well, I don't even know what stats everybody uses, so I'm just fucking. Uh, it's give me the, the same stats the minus skill. money. What did you say? Everybody talked over you. Recorder. Yep. That was creativity and fun. Okay. That was smarts and bold. And. Marshmallow. That was bold and fun. Nice. What the fun one is? One might say that the monster prom had hardened us on the highs and lows of love. But no, in love we were yeah, always no absolute beginners. And summer camp was no different. No one talked about it, but the idea of a summer love loomed over our heads. Close to the last day of camp, there was a meteor shower happening just three weeks away. Everyone knew that if you were into someone, you were going to watch that damn thing together. And so a silent yet powerful pressure invaded us. It was the monster prob all over again. Everything seemed uncertain. Everything but one thing. Whoever we were asking on a meteor shower date, it was probably going to be one of the six coolest people on that bus. Joy Johnson Jojima, 23. A ba badass witch who wanted to chill a bit after saving the world countless times. Aravi Mishra, 22. A hot-headed adventurer possessed by a curse who had turned out to be the most annoying roommate ever. Calculester Hewlett Packard version 1.1. A library. 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 A library.
Dahlia Aquino, 20, a, a buff nice. blue demon and warmonger who had set her sights on conquering summer next. Damien LeVay, 21, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. And Milo Belladonna, 23, a death reaper doubling as an internet influencer who was profoundly in love with life and all of its earthly pleasures. The bus trip was long, and all of summer could be shaped by this first step well taken. And so it was clear, it all came down to breaking the ice and causing a good impression with the right person. What is my favorite hobby? Well, these are very obvious, huh? Saving, Saving the, world. the world is, is going to be incredibly obvious. So, that's very, the one you can watch. Very want. anime workouts is powerful. Nice. And nice. as is crimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with Saving the World. Josh? I'm assuming very anime uh, workouts. It should be very anime workouts. I'm thinking, probably. That yeah. seems about right. Boko? I'm pretty sure that's the spot. Efficient uh, farming, I assume. It right? is it's gonna, uh, efficient farming. It's gonna be efficient farming. It's, that, sure. uh, efficient farming is Avri. She's a fucking yeah. min maxer. Greg. Greg. Uh, who do you want to go for? Hmm, we can, we can tell you what the. Yeah. Uh, saving the world also? Uh huh. Also going for joy? Bastard. Yeah, you bet. Hey, uh, is this a bad? Listen, I decided this in my head. Oh, oh I decided this in my head. <laughs> so um, I was also gonna go to Joy, so, but I heard no. Soups wanted to do it, so I I was also gonna do Joy. Back. <laughs> <laughs> so they really want. You know what? If I if there was a fifth player mode, I, mean, I would also probably want to go for Joy. <laughs> I mean, that that just kind of speaks to the dynamic between me and Soups, right? Nobody wants to cuck Soups because they'll get cucked back, but me. I'll take I it. <laughs> I cannot you'll, cuck my own wife. You'll risk the cucking, yes. Hmm. Interesting. Cuck or wow. get cucked. No, I, I was world. I was just going to use Joy as a backup if Swissy is actually going to try to go super hard Dahlia. No, I wasn't going to do that to you. Which would have caused me to instantly transmission stuff. to your home and snap your neck. <laughs> and steal his switch. And then take your switch. And then take your switch, so I have two now. <laughs> I'll tape yeah. them together. Like a That's mighty crazy. hammer. Josh bought a switch, y'all. I can't you believe it. You can switch between right. them. Or you gotta switch. With yeah, did you not? Did you not see the the picture I posted? Yeah. I proved it was me because I asked for an adjective, and then Swissy said "mom," which was frog. <laughs> uh, which is not natural. And then Ezzy said "frog." <laughs> uh, so I wrote well, "frog." Which is also yeah, not natural. Well, he asked for a noun. He asked for a noun first okay. of all. Oh yeah, so okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're not dumb. I did Swissy ask for a noun. Though. Swissy said "mom," which is technically a noun, but also very rude of him. It is. Josh's mom is dead for I was, those who I don't was, know the thing more. I was, I, I baited them, you see. Did, did, I laid... did we really need to bring up Josh's family situation for the stream yeah. lore? Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, sometimes you gotta get caught. Hey, Josh, I'm sorry for mother. bringing up your dead mom. Yeah, no, yeah, we're, we're all sorry that she's dead. Uh, but, uh, you know. I'm God dying! Knows what? Oh, I'm you're so, Josh's mom? You know that dead you're mom you have, very deceased mama. mother? Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the stream, As he everybody. Has transformed into December seventh. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Welcome so many heroes going to Hampton. <laughs> My God, can I read? Uh, Anyways, uh, who's playing Joy? I do have a Switch, Molo guy. I laid a clever trap. You see, Swissy was playing Breath of the Wild and talking about it, and I kept going spoilers, Swissy, and then uh, to to goad him into saying what I thought he would say, which was, "You're not even going to get a Switch." And then I went. <laughs> <laughs> and I took a photo of my switch. <laughs> nice. Blew you said you got minds. it with like reward points or something? Yeah, yep. my work. I mean, I did nice. guess like while we were talking, I said if you ever even got a switch, points? it would be a switch light. They they give out the the managers and above have points that they can give out. They started the system like over a year ago. Oh, you told me you were gonna get and the fucking. Uh, I was gonna loop. get a ukulele, but then yeah, they yeah, took yeah. the ukulele off the store, so I got a Nintendo Switch Lite instead. <laughs> Nice. Of course you do. It do be like that sometimes. Really wanted that fucking ukulele though. I could be, I could learn how to play somewhere over the rainbow. I mean, I probably take, wouldn't have. But was it only the most expensive one they took off, or did they take all? They of took them? off two of the four ukuleles, <laughs> the two bad. most expensive ones. Why? So yeah, there were still two other ukuleles I could have taken, but they were garbage ukuleles. I didn't want them. They were bad. Oh, high quality, good cut, you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna bad. Small ones. Made oh, wow. So many right. heroes was, going yeah. to camp you... this summer. That's comforting. Although, if we have too many people racing to save the world from destruction, it's likely we'll get in each other's way. But honestly, I'm oh, sure yeah, one of you is probably way more skilled than all the others anyway. Don't take it personal. It's just statistically likely. 
I'm a little curious to see which of you is the superior hero and who will fall flat on their face in a crisis. I guess we'll know the truth once evil, evil rears its ugly head. Bitch. One of you is going to fall flat on your face. Bada bing! Oh right, I was doing this lady, wasn't I? Yeah. In uh, one of the in one of the two voices I have, which is also, this one. Wink wink <laughs> nudge nudge doing the lady. <laughs> 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 what the fuck? <laughs> that was nothing. Nice. First of all, there was no, no reason what do you to mean? go. That was hilarious. <laughs> it's perfect. Uh, like it's Beavis and butthead ass looking motherfuckers. It was like a it was like a Peter little Peter Griffin laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Shut uh, up. All right. <clears throat> no. <clears throat> Sorry. Have to. <clears throat> Gotta get into character, which is just me doing this. Yeah, I love anime workouts! <laughs> Josh, you just became my best friend! Wait, what even is an anime workout? You picked that option, sure, but I'm willing to bet you're not even 100% certain what it meant. Listen, I've seen the workout <laughs> anime. I've seen One Punch Man. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about uh, how heavy are the dumbbells you lift. <laughs> what? That's the That's name. one that came out. Uh, I didn't, I, I've never seen the name. I just know there is one. Though you could you could just pick yeah, a random topic, anime. you could pick a random to topic and there's probably an anime about it. Yep. Uh, what's an anime workout? You say it's a workout that's totally anime, like bench pressing a tree or doing a magical girl transformation. Magical girl transformation. Seriously, work out your abs and glutes. We should get in some magical reps this summer, Josh. <laughs> hey. Okay, I'm forcing her. No. That's awesome. Efficient farming is one of my favorite hobbies, too. She's such a a full-time warrior and evil monster slayer, I don't have time to farm inefficiently. True. Any time wasted is time an enemy spends looting my gold and laughing in my face. Mate, I'll farm inefficiently all day long. Who needs farming when you can get bagels for five bucks at Walmart anyway? That's what I'm this is, saying! <laughs> this is me and Soup's different approaches to Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> It is. Also, though. you got you got to put a little more surfer into your hex voice, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. You, you had a really good one last time. time. You're kind of doing... like, eh, hey, oh, yeah. like, What if we just didn't? What if we just didn't? There you yeah, go. Yeah, somewhere in here. <laughs> bada bing, bada yeah, somewhere in there more. Oh, I, I really liked it. It fit him very well. <laughs> don't mind hex. They don't understand people like us. At least that <laughs> one you to talk to a bit <laughs> <different laughs> like that. We only had three weeks left to woo our crushes and conquer their hearts. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Loading. So Joy's got to be like, what, intelligence max or something? I would assume probably that's probably like... Yeah, it's good. Boldness. Mm, that's a good point. Well, not everyone can be bold, and there's already like three bold people, I'm guessing right? it's... I'm going to guess smarts and creativity, probably. That would be my no. smarts and charm. They're according it, to this, this like word, yeah, world, yeah, could be bold. Smarts and charm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me try to remember what's what here. There's there's something that tells you, isn't there? Yeah, if I mouse yeah. over here. So. Yeah. Let's see, what oh, I hey, what are here? starting stats? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, let's see. Four, five, Fucking. Five, six, ah. Josh, you're at three eight six oh, yeah, three four. Spoko's at four eight three six three, Swissy's at five six five three five. Not charming, but I will live. You'll figure it out. Yeah. So you and Swissy have kind of average stats, while Boko and uh, Boko and Josh, the people who used the guide, optimized. Yep. I didn't use the guide. I just picked with a bold I, one. I just kind of don't picked take that, that from me. I, I was clever. Up. I was like, hmm. I used my big giga brain. <laughs> Anyways. While you're hiking through the woods, you find a little clearing with a beautiful blue pond. There's a very handsome man staring deeply into the pond. He's talking to his reflection like it's another person. A person he really wants to fuck. You swipe his wallet while he's not looking and find out his name is Narcissus and he is not an organ donor, asshole. And he's oh, one oh. punch away from getting a free smart water at 7-Eleven. Oh, well, he's definitely not going to be using that anytime soon. You head to the gas station and gain two smarts from your smart water. <laughs> Later, you're helping Joy collect it. some medicinal... I get it some medicinal herbs in the woods and low-key hoping you find some weed. Dahlia tagged along too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, Biff, check out the... Oh, God, I'm not going to be able to do this. Oh, Biff, oh, check Biff. out these awesome <laughs> yellow blossoms. This is yarrow, also known as Knight's Milfoil. It's a very potent healing agent and rare for the season, so... 
Joy, check out this witch herb I found. It's brown and furry and it's biting me a lot. That means it's going to make a very good spell. Try to feel too left out, Bithk. Joy and I are both witches of the coven, so that's why we're experts in all this nature spell stuff. Dahlia, you are not in the coven, and that's not a medicinal herb. You're holding an actual squirrel right now. <laughs> oh my god, it's a witch. Oh no, it's Baba oh, Yaga. No, it's it's a Baba Yaga. Holy fuck. It's wafting into my nose holes. Mm, Holy the, fuck. The delicious children I smell mucking around in my precious forest. Oh fuck, it's the oh, Baba Yaga, the very old witch who lives in the woods. She's mean and annoying and terrifying and smells like soup, but you'd still hit it. Lies. Aha! No. I caught you, naughty, naughty children. Get your grubby hands off of my herbs and get out of my forest or else I'll cast a dreadful curse upon you. Ha! It's not your forest. Technically, this land is owned by the Chinese International Petroleum Corporation, and we're just here to collect medicinal herbs for potions, so chill. <laughs> Did you say you're collecting herbs for potions? Potions? <laughs> what are you naughty potions. children? Witches? Are you witches, children? As a matter of fact, Baba Yaga, I am a witch. <laughs> and I'm a witch too! Check out my witch muscles! Doesn't this <laughs> bicep scream witch to you? No, she's not. Ha! You two naughty children are not witches! You. You're just a goth who likes to play pretend and call you some, some random blue big boy. <laughs> Little rude. Hey, how dare you? I'm a witch. Oh, and also I'm a girl. Preposterous. You're not a girl. Oh, no. Baba girl. Yaga sucks. <laughs> Baba Yaga sucks. Ba wow. Oh, how do we kill Baba witches. Yaga? <laughs> Why, I bet you've never even eaten a single child! End her Alright, everyone. We gotta find the kill True Baba Yaga witches. ending. <laughs> True witches live in the woods. They keep little kitties and file noise complaints. <laughs> oh, and I She's suppose witches do magic. But really, the child eating is the most important part. Uh, child eating is a very outdated, inhumane magic practice. A vast majority of witches have sworn off it completely. It makes us all look really bad when witches eat kids. <laughs> this naughty child thinks she's a witch. She presumes to tell me that a witch should not eat children. Truly, the hmm. modern youth is corrupted. Oh no, her. she's a boomer gatekeeper. <laughs> oh. Oh. And I shall not even start on the big blue boy. Boy, oh, were you not so racked with muscles? Perhaps I would eat you and gain your soul's magic. Arr! Holy shit, Baba Yaga's Gosh, opinions are so sucks. outdated she's about to start eating your friends. Quick, figure out how to open her mind to your modern ways. Remind the Baba Yaga of the good old days when she was a trailblazer and for the new controversial hobby of eating children. Introduce Baba Yaga to the most wonderful cultural phenomenon of the last 2,000 years, <laughs> K-pop. Now that one's creativity, I'm pretty mm. sure. Yeah, that's creativity. For Isn't sure, which is my lowest revenue. stat, so I'm going to go with this one. It was Charm. Okay. That's probably smart. Oh, Charming. Charm. You asked the Baba Yaga if she was ever considered too progressive. She probably criticized for eating children at first, right? That couldn't have been popular. <laughs> this ugly child is correct. Well, there was a time where I was quite the activist for witches, you know. Ha, ah, those were the good old days, about 3,000 years ago. Mm. Ha, t'was better times. I was one of the first witches to ever eat <laughs> a child in public. Uh. And, oh, how the world hated me for my beliefs. They tried to burn me at the stake. I should have succeeded. Yarp. Whoa, fuck, they burned you at the stake? Why aren't you, like, dead and all burned up? <laughs> yes, indeed, they tried to burn me at the stake. Fools! <laughs> I cast a protection spell on myself and hid 12 sticks... <laughs> what? <laughs> ...under my robes. <laughs> wow. Pardon me? Dynamite is classic witch weapon. Us witches use it all the time. Sick. Yes, 
yes, those fools. They were unable to change with the times. Couldn't handle my push for progress. I'm just like that Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, him. Shut up. <laughs> Holy shit, no. You were advocating for something inhumane and horrible. We are not the same, Baba Yaga. Witches shouldn't eat kids. I'm a fucking vegan, for goddess's sake. <laughs> well, you naughty children might have a point. Maybe it is a good thing that witches are evolving. Progress is inevitable, you know. Perhaps not eating children is the <laughs> new eating children. How, how badly. Well, you naughty children, I shall spare your lives for today. I must consult my kitty cat to evolve these strange modern ways. Now, get out of my forest. Okay, that was oh, I absolutely can't stand her. But if this conversation <laughs> helped open the Baba Yaga's mind even a tiny bit, then it was probably a good thing. Thanks, Bithk. Yeah, thanks for getting the Baba Yaga to tell us her witch stories, Bithk. I feel really feel like I learned something. Something about what it really means to be a witch and how to kill people with dynamite. I'm a better <laughs> witch than ever. Nope, you're not a witch. Not even a little. Not at all. Not a witch. You spend the rest of the afternoon helping Joy finish her herb collection. It's fun, and your friends are grateful you chased off the Baba Yaka with your uh, conversational skills. While nobody's looking, you eat an herb that you think might be weed. It's not weed at all, but it does give you two charm and one boldness. Hell yeah. Josh. It wasn't even the weed. I want to go to this spooky house to raise my bold. That day, you venture into the haunted mansion to prove that you're not a little scary cat. The mana transforms itself into a winding maze from which there is no escape. You'll be trapped here. Forever! Luckily, you brought your phone and some snacks, so you sit down and play solitaire in that until the house gets bored of you and shows you the exit. <laughs> Genius. Turns That's out the best brain. defense against the supernatural was total apathy. You gained two boldness. True. You slip away to meet Dahlia, who told you to meet her in the haunted house later for extremely important business. Have no fear. There you are, Josh. Excellent. All is going as I planned. You see, according to my detailed battle strategy... Dahlia pulls out a notebook covered in puffy <laughs> dolphin stickers, labored as best summer ever notebook, top secret. One of the key components of the best summer ever is sharing a summer kiss in a, ha a haunted house. So pucker up, Josh. I'm about to declare mouth war on your face. That's your Dahlia, uh -huh. alright? You lean in for the kiss. Ooh. Bow! Oh, no. <laughs> it's right. these two. They're here already. Swizzy. 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 you, I think. Swizzy. Swizzy. <laughs> that was a line read, technically. Yeah. yeah. You got, you're supposed to say boot, too. That's how you scare people. But I'm not a ghost. I'm a werewolf. It's wrong to steal from other cultures. Excuse me, what? Was I supposed to be startled just now? The only thing that startles me is thinking about how much I love otters. They are catastrophically adorable. It was supposed to be a really? prank, but it looks like we failed. Oh well, back to the drawing board, which we hit people over the head with when we can't think of any better pranks. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, your prank failed? Unfortunate. Being hilariously pranked is another key ingredient of the best summer ever. Wait, did you say we were trying to have the best summer ever? It was literally the last thing I said, yes. So then, you've already written a heartfelt poem about how great God and I are, because, you know, that's the number one ingredient for the best summer ever and stuff. I was unaware of this. <laughs> Tell me more. Well, it's got to be a Shakespearean sonnet full of frank confessions of deep feelings and allusions to both modern and classical literature. Polly lays down some ground rules and Dahlia gets to work, a look of intense concentration on her face. Soon she's almost finished, but there's a problem. A sonnet is supposed to end with in a rhyming couplet, and I just can't think of one that sums up everything I love about Polly and Scott. Ooh, ooh, just say pizza. Everyone loves pizza. As usual, mm. Scott's suggestion is almost optimally unhelpful. It looks like it's up to you to wow everyone with your incredible poetry <laughs> skills. Uh -oh. And so it is with Scott and also Polly, two unhelpful. people I would rescue from a trolley. And so it is with Polly oh. and Scott. They're really, really, really hot. Okay. Hell yeah. Help. Uh, anything that's like sex would be fun. Charm, so... charm's bottom, almost certainly. Mm. See the charm or fun? Is it because the top it's also ones... really dumb? That's true. 
The top one could be Boltus. Uh, um. Because he would rescue them let's from go a trolley, top. I guess. That's, that's yeah. yeah. Thank God, that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I'm, I'm just looking at the stats criteria tweet. Nice. Yes, I knew that this what this poem was missing was a reference to my own heroics. Poetry accomplished. Dahlia finishes writing her sonnet on a sheet of perfumed pink paper from her best summer ever notebook and nervously hands it to Polly and Scott. Polly reads it thoughtfully Aww. and Scott refrains from chewing on it for almost one minute. Wow, they're both really captivated. <laughs> well, wh what do you think? I'm very impressed by what you've created here, Dahlia. Sure, it's written in crayon and you rhymed crush them with crush them again. But I think you've done a really excellent job of subverting the poetic formula with your idiosyncratic selection of both medium and message. I mean, look here on line 5 and 6. I am friends with Scott, and it is great. I am friends with Polly, too. Checkmate. Here you have managed not only to reference the great game of chess, also alluded to by such literary lights as Lewis Carroll and... D I, I couldn't even begin to pronounce that. Dostoevsky? No. Dost... Dostoevsky, I guess, himself. Dostoevsky? But your use of capital yes. letters, exclamation points, and adversarial language functions as a biting critique of the late capitalist forces which turn friendship into a struggle for dominance. Yeah. I didn't mean to do any of that stuff. I just wrote what was in my heart. Or what's the word for the place I keep my emotions? Oh yeah, my fists! That's what makes it so pure. This is beautiful, Dahlia. Please never change. And finally, we arrive at the closing couplet, an allusion to the classic trolley problem, first proposed by Philippe <laughs> Foot in 1967, which highlights the paradoxical nature of love. I declare this poem a total success. You rock, bitch. I give it two poetries way up. And I give it two <laughs> poetries way up. Uh, out of how many? There are more than two poetries? You're ready to explain to Scott that there are, in fact, way more than two poetries when the wall caves in and a runaway trolley comes speeding towards you. <laughs> oh no, a runaway trolley! I can flip the switch and send it to another track, preventing it from hitting Scott, but then it will most certainly run over Polly. Oh shit, life is doing that thing again where it imitates art. What are we gonna do? You know, just what to do. Uppercut well, the trolley so done. hard it fights back, flies back out through the wall and limps away to bother someone else with its philosophical quandaries. Wow! Really smart way to handle that problem. How many philosophers <laughs> struggled with it for so many years? Probably because most philosophers are too dumb to punch a moving trolley, but you fixed all that. You published a paper in a prestigious philosophy journal, gaining two smarts and one boldness. Boko. Nice. Okay, let's see. Let me look. Uh, the, it, there is fun Rome, available. Lake and Scout HQ. Fun, fun is up top. Fun is it's lake. It's a lake. Yeah. yeah, I like to lake. You decide to go relax in the Five. lake for a bit. Camp Spooky gets pretty crazy, so it's nice to just float on the water and chill. You end up falling asleep and wake up to realize you floated halfway across the lake straight into a crab rave? The crabs are just as oh, confused no. as you are, but they invite you to rave with them, and their party is surprisingly poppin'. You gain one invite crab to the next rave. crab rave and two fun. Crab hey. rave. Crab rave. Crab You're hoping to run into your gal, Aravi, but so far she hasn't been to any of the places you'd expect. The mines, the dungeons, the forest... You hear Camp Spooky was doing an arts and crafts pop-up session, so you go to pass the time, and are shocked to find Aravi already there. The house. Yes, yes! The slump molded earthenware masterpiece will be one of my finest works yet! Loser. <sighs> oh, hello there. Welcome to my purgatory of boredom and suffering. You mean your craftatory of potsdom and creating? No. That's nothing. <laughs> I meant what I said the first time. In that case, can we make a no complaining on our next rule of compromise? Because you're harshing my pottery, Buzz. You see what I have to put up with? Hess gets super into any random activity they see on TV and immediately wants to go try it out. They watched a documentary on Mesopotamia, and all they took away from it was pot, and immediately <laughs> threw themselves into this obnoxious new hobby. They've been leaving little curse-shaped clay prints all over my nice adventuring gear. Which you've been wearing because I graciously agree to accompany you on quests, just like you gracious graciously indulge in my hobbies too. See, that's how this give and take works. Well, I want to give you a punch in the face and take all this clay away from you so we can do something less boring. You think watching the paint dry is boring? Try watching clay dry. At least a painting is a picture of something. Why can't you let yourself enjoy my newfound love of po pottery? Pots are beautiful. The only time I ever care about pots is when I can smash them and get rupees. 
Hmm, <laughs> that may be the only circumstance in which Robbie cares about pots, but one circumstance is better than no circumstance, and you know just how to use it. Guilt trip. Ask Ravi to make pots to give back to the poor old man whose hundreds of pots she has broken over the last several months. Fuck guilt. Ravi should make uh -oh. her own pots and then break those to get rupees. Infinite money. Mm. So that's bold. Mm. That's gotta be bold. Yeah, it, it feels like it. yelled fuck. He did do a swear. Yeah, let's try that one. Did do a yeah, swear. let's try that one for bold. Hey. Yep. Oh, wow. You're s some kind of adventuring genius. Why did I never think of that? Maybe because that's definitely not how that works. Ye of little faith. You'll be eating your words on a Cheeto M M M bagel sandwich. Mm, I do love those. Mm. When I come out of this situation with unlimited money. You and Ravi sit in the gun making a pot together, ghost style with the powdery wheel. It's super romantic. I'm assuming that's a reference to a movie. Uh, yeah, uh, it's Ghost. Ah. Yeah, the, the, movie ghost. the movie Ghost. We're yeah. going to the dive guy's in the ghost, and his like pottery, wife is like making a pot or whatever, and he like goes up behind her as a ghost. Yeah. And like helps her make the pot. Ah, I see. And it's, it's I don't know, it's like a metaphor. It's like, <laughs> well, it's for like sex. It's like your dead loved one like connecting with you and everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ah. It's like an intimate moment. Anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to dive into an entire chamber full of rupees and swim through them. Or at least it would be if Robbie were slightly less fixated on the prospect of infinite money. But you guys are still getting to touch each other and stuff, so whatever. You and Aravi finished crafting your first pot. Mmm, it's not terrible. It's not perfect, but some of those flaws can be hid with a proper glaze. No glaze, just smash. Aravi smashes a pot before even taking it off the wheel. And yet? Holy shit, how, how are the rupees in there? Did you put them in when I wasn't watching? Level up, loser. No, it's not like you've ever <laughs> been on an adventure before, Hex. Smash pot, get rupees. I... I'm amazed and don't know what to say. We are totally winning our lane. Say so you'll watch me. Make the Did she just say that she's winning her lane? And oh, subs no. subsequently break the shit out of a whole bunch of rupees bonding pots. Ravi goes into a pottery making frenzy. Her eyes gleam as though th as she throws pot after pot, both throwing a pot on the wheel and then throwing a pot at the wall. Rupees raining. Hmm. You know, given the cost of materials, she actually isn't making a huge profit with this strategy. But even as fast as she's going, her pottery technique is actually improving. Like, the lip of that last pot was much more even than the one before, and the thickness is getting more consistent. In the timeless eternal words of the ancient Mesopotamians, Hello lit fam yeet. Hex has a great time getting mm. to review Aravi's pottery mm. skills, Aravi has a great time getting rupees, and you have a great time getting two creativity and one charm. Hey. Greg. Hang on! <laughs> <laughs> Greg wasn't ready. Greg! Greg? Come back, Greg. Can you hear us, Greg? Well, if Greg's gonna take a minute, I need a drink, BRB. Okay. I guess I'll uh, also go get water. Okay, so... Hmm. Me and Boko, then. Joke's uh. on you, my headset is wireless. Uh -oh. oh, okay, that's cool. We'll never be free of Josh now. I also am in the kitchen. I'm getting a new headset tomorrow. That'll be fun. It's not wireless, but it is. Frankly, you never know where I am. Josh, you could be out in the street right now. I could, I could be out in the streets. <laughs> These I could be streets. <laughs> I you're, could you're be okay, You're okay, Swissy. Steven is AFK. Oh, okay, cool. So, Greg, where would you like to go? You could be in the center of the street cross-legged with your laptop. You can go uh, get, show you me can what get does like. charm or creativity. Oh, you're two. Uh, uh, probably want creativity. Yeah, charm or creativity. So, the camp on the left. Creativity. Scout HQ? Yep, Scout so HQ. So, Scout HQ. That day, you happened to take in the same Monster Scouts class as Mamimi, Mamimi, the Oni girl. You didn't get a good sleep last night, so you ask her if she has any of that weird energy drink she let you have once during high school. She doesn't, but she does have some very strange-smelling coffee that could help. Where does this girl even find these weird-ass drinks? The coffee is delicious, but it comes with side effects. You get an acquired fear of caterpillars, and you grow too creativity in your hair. Eh? What? Oh no. There's oh so many God. people in this one. Hey, it's... It's the fucking tiger guy. <laughs> yeah, coach. Yeah, coach. Later, you're listening to Coach's pep talk about selling monster cow scout cookies. You're paying attention because Coach is the only father figure in your life right now. And that's why selling monster cow cookies teaches both survival skills and entrepreneurship. Remember, no matter how many cookies you sell, I'll always be proud of you, kids. I'm out. 
Eh, my dads are already super proud of me for being the most metal son of all time. I'm not selling shit. Mm -hmm. Same. I've got some reading to do this afternoon. I'm halfway through a practical witch's guide to navigating absurd shenanigans. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather put all these cookies in my inventory and save them for my next mini boss fight. These things are shockingly nutritious and they give a defense buff. Oh, that's weird. Do you guys smell the strange, off-putting sense of camp destroying bulldozers and capitalist pollution? Oh fuck! This can only mean. Oh. Well, um, well, well. Who the if fuck? It isn't a bunch it's of Archie youths. It is I, Mr. Papa's <laughs> evil CEO. I've just stopped by to crush your spirit with my capitalist machinations. Uh, what the fuck are you talking about, you crap? Well, this is the best character. Cravat, uh, cravat wearing dweeb. <laughs> I'm so glad you asked. Look here, youths. In my fist, I have the deed to this very campground you're standing <laughs> on. I'm going to turn this shit hall into a shopping mall. Hmm. And the best part is, there's no way for you to stop me. Why, you'd have to sell 1,000 boxes of your pathetic <laughs> cookies to have enough money to buy the campgrounds yourself. Uh, dude, why the fuck are you telling us any of this? My hire, did he just tell us exactly how to foil his evil scheme? Eh, you fools! I'm telling you this because it's impossible! You'll never sell 1,000 boxes of cookies in time! I'm bulldozing this whole place at midnight tonight! Ha! Technically tomorrow. I'd love to stay in Bragamore, but I have an appointment with my therapist. And by therapist, I mean a whale that I'm going to drown in crude oils for fun. <laughs> Toodles! <laughs> this guy looks like Radigan from The Great Mouse Detective. <laughs> okay, this just got real. We are selling those cookies no matter what. I'm not going to let that piece of shit capitalist destroy our beloved camp. The trees need us, you guys. Yeah, that money-grubbing noob insulted us. He thinks that we can't sell a thousand boxes of cookies. That's bullshit. All must How dare he challenge our skills? Game on, motherfucker. And yeah, I guess we should defend the trees or whatever. Hecate, help me. The point is, we're all in. We've just got to figure out how to sell how to sell one thousand cookies by midnight. And the idea is, Faith usually comes with the up with the master plans. Um... <laughs> now you have Greg. Yeah. Okay, how about this? We find a random guy and just beat the shit out of him until he buys his box of cookies. Then we do that to- uh, Fuck. We do that a thousand times! What if we just ate all the cookies and said that we sold them? My personal speed eating record is 284 cookies per hour. This is going nowhere. But luckily you know the perfect way to sell a thousand boxes of Monster Cat cookies before midnight. Your whole life has been building to this moment. Claim that the 1,000 boxes of cookies are a valuable piece of art and auction them off to some clueless rich idiot. Hmm, that's pretty good. That's creativity. Convince everyone that holding a cookie between your butt cheeks is the secret to a perfectly sculpted body. <laughs> that's fun. That's what fun. cheeks? So hmm. I would say creativity. Yeah, creativity. Is the top I got one. top. So, yeah, I'll go for the top one. Top one. I know. Yep. 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 A rich people auction. That's perfect. Rich people were idiots. Plus, I just picked up this flyer that says there's a secret millionaire auction of eccentric artwork tonight. For once, Hex isn't lying. You concoct a master plan, taking advantage of everyone's special <laughs> skills. Once. You all sneak into the auction, but right before it starts. All right, Aravi, the auctioneer is right around this corner. Take him out quietly, and we'll be running the show in no time. Stealth mission? I'm on it. This motherfucker is going down without a peep. Wait, don't kill him, okay? I have a very strict rule. No human casualties, even during acts of heroism. I'm totally not going to kill him. Robbie stabs the auctioneer right in the heart, immediately killing him. You all get into position for your master plan. <laughs> the auction begins. <laughs> oh Welcome my god! To the rich people are they have, all, they oh. have outfits. I am your auctioneer well, for the evening. We have such good art for you to be hit on, such as this big diamond made of jewels, and a rare sculpture entitled "One Thousand Boxes of Monster Scout Cookies." This sculpture is a priceless work of art by the legendary contemporary artist Yoi. Those cookies are definitely art. Uh, hang on, chicken fries. He looks really good in that <laughs> suit, though. 
as the millionaire bad boy. It's actually a pretty in I demand to bid for them now. I'm royalty, <laughs> damn it. If a prince wants them, then I want them, says one of the random rich people in the crowd. Put the cookies up for bid, auctioneer. As an amazing surprise, the artist Zoe is here. You can tell she's an artist <laughs> because she's wearing all black. Tell us, what is the meaning of your cookie sculpture? Um, to sell cookies, I guess. Whatever, just hurry this up, Aravi. What a delightfully apathetic artist, shouts another rich person. I'll pay any price. I must have this cookie sculpture or my name isn't Edgar Moneycheeks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, since Edgar. all of us agree that this is a valuable sculpture and not just a stack of cookies, let's start the bidding. Do I hear 10000 10000 $10,000. <laughs> <laughs> I bid one million dollars! Take that, asswipes! The prince shan't beat me! I bid two million dollars! Says a rich guy who's wearing a mink eye patch. We did it, you guys! We actually have enough money to bear the deed to the campgrounds before that douchebag CEO can turn into a shopping mall. We saved Camp Spooky! Oh, yeah! I kind of forgot that's why we were doing this. Your friends all think you're a genius, and you pickpocketed two boldness and one fun out of some rich guy's wallet. Nice! Nice. Hell yeah, dude. Let's trade places. Let's trade places. No. Random. Random. Why do you never do the fun thing? This is the same order! <laughs> it takes too order. long. Run order. it back. <laughs> takes too long, motherfucker. We got a whole hour and ten minutes. Yeah, we also it's, spent 20 minutes on the long. intro. This one is also longer. Well. Alright, so what am I low on? Let's see. I need more smarts. During your hike through the woods, you find a baby bird that's fallen out of his nest. You nurse him back to help with some delicious trail mix. You also give him great advice on puberty and how to do his taxes when he grows up. Then the mama bird finds you and she is pissed that you're holding her baby. She tries to peck your eyes out, but you fight her off. You've learned an important lesson today. Don't fuck with birds. You gain two smarts. True. Afterwards, you're hiking with Joy, Dahlia, and Milo. Joy and Milo are trying to have a very insightful conversation about the practical value of tragic literature. But a loud nearby crunching noise is totally killing the vibe. Okay, Dahlia, what are you eating? I thought I told you that chewing on the bones of your enemies is a choking hazard. I'm not choking on anything. I'm eating those berries I found a few minutes ago. They're so colorful and bright and full of possibilities. So let's say, or do one of you want to take Milo since I'm already doing two? I don't want to do mine. I also already have two. So oh, it's up. Well, is there only like two per it. person or what are we doing? Nah, I'll just fucking do it. Oh, much All like right. your future, darling. Wait, how do you know those berries aren't poisonous? Mm, I guess I don't. Well, the only way to know for sure would be to eat all of them and see if I get poisoned. That is literally the worst method I can think of to solve this. Milo, back me up here. But I like Dahlia's go-getter attitude. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Oh, you're both hopeless. I guess I'll just save the day again. Off the clock, I might add. Hey, the real profit is knowing you did the right thing. Just let me... Oh, uh, hmm. I actually don't know if these are poisonous either. Hmm. Well, this is awkward. Does anyone have any ideas on how to identify these? Dahlia raises her hand. Just eat them all. Besides eating them, <laughs> Milo raises their hand. Or doing an Instagram poll. Everyone puts their hands down. Looks like it's all up to you now. <laughs> Do you have any ideas? Uh, check the berries Yelp reviews. <laughs> Find some besotted lovers in the woods and tragically murder one of them. If the other one tries to eat your berries, they're I mean, definitely smarts, poisonous. Smart seems to be the... Well, I was gonna say the bottom one, but... <laughs> uh, well, besotted makes me think the top one is smart. Or maybe creative? Mm. It's hard to say. Mm. The re Yelp reviews seem mm. fun, maybe? I don't know, this one's hard. I guess, but it's almost super smart, big brain move to check the Yelp reviews. Creativity can be anything not, tied to the arts. Don't have Yelp the, I feel like the top one's probably creativity. I don't know. But if it's, it's also it could be charm. If it's all things that sound romantic or straight up screen. Yeah. Mm. Mm. You're right. This is a hard be. one, Steven. Yeah, I know. I'm. <laughs> uh. Nuggets. Just click randomly. I want to see I'm this sorry. one more, I so I'm going to go know. with it. Damn it, it was creative. Are you sure? I don't feel super Ooh. comfortable just murdering. It was creative, the top one. 
I don't feel super yeah, comfortable just murdering sense. some random innocent stranger in the woods. Too much talking. Dolly is hungry and we can't waste time. You follow the sounds of a conversation to find a man and a woman sitting in a nearby clearing. You open your poison detection shit. Pull out your poison detection Glock and off the man. <laughs> <laughs> no, cries the woman. My protonic friend Mark. Why would you do that, you sick bastard? Oh, I think this is all been a huge <laughs> misunderstanding. We were looking to off one half of a pair of desperate lovers. Sorry. But you know, every mistake is an opportunity to grow. Are you serious right now? What, you assumed just because Mark and I were a man and a woman we just had to be dating? This is just a kind of bullshit heteronormative thinking that makes discourse between genders all but impossible. Uh, what? It means get bent, douchebags. She storms off. You definitely feel like an asshole nice. now, but the real issue is that you still don't know whether or not Dahlia's berries are poisonous. Oh, you know, I don't think I really care about that right now. My main concern is whether or not you think this is a date, Bisk. Creed, as someone with an ambiguous, eh, ambiguous gender identity <laughs> ambiguous. myself, I can't just assume that every interaction I have with anyone is a potential date, nor do I want to. Worst episode yeah, being a murderer is one thing, but a creepy murderer is a step too far. Come on, guys. They leave. They take the berries with them, too. They don't even leave you any to off yourself with in order to escape this embarrassing situation. Bummer, you lose two fun and one smarts. <laughs> Shit. Heck. Oh, Alright. Yes. What do I do here? What do I do we know what did we ever figure out what the second one for Dahlia is? Um the get us is is bold fun? Char is the ones I'm looking at is charm and smart, but for Dahlia? I don't, what? I don't let the thing is I don't trust any of these guides because there's nothing definitive. That about can't yet. possibly be right. You want more bold? But I guess yeah, I there's also... a guess. There's also a guess in here that's for bold and smart. So. Smart? Mm. I don't think smart. Oh, I, I know. Dolly smart... doesn't strike me as smart. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. Uh, well, that. Yeah, I would have said not... bold and fun, but I don't know what Damien is. If he's bold and fun, then they won't have yeah. two dateable characters. People. This is hard. I'm just gonna go do bold again. <laughs> All right. You go to the haunted manor to gain some boldness, since you found a brochure that promised some boldness if you visited. Instead, you find a mischievous demon. It was all a ruse to lure you in here. The demon will take nine years off your life. You take the demon to court for a misleading advertising. The jury isn't fond of mischievous demons who fool people into giving years of their life up, so you win, and the demon has to give you two boldness. Fuck yeah. Later, you happen upon Dahlia washing a car in the middle of camp. Why? How did she even get a car in the middle of camp? Josh, I can see the f you're on your face, the question that is burning in your heart. What does washing a car have to do with working out? Um, not quite, but sure, that's as good a place to start as any. Well, just because I'm on a camping retreat doesn't mean I can go soft. That's what my enemies would want from me. I must find alternative ways of maintaining my rippling abs. And I watched a documentary recently that taught me that the best workouts are often hidden in menial tasks, such as washing a car. Wax on, wax off, you know? Mm. <laughs> I sure. see. Fortunately, I don't think this the car washing is doing much for my muscles. Or even for the car. I'm pretty sure it's dirtier than when I found it. That's probably because on closer inspection, Dahlia is washing the car with 50-pound weights. Presumably washcloths aren't heavy enough. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> Perhaps if this isn't the proper workout for me. Uh, everyone knows the best workout adapts to each individual's body and what best exercises their muscles. I probably just need to find a different menial task that would give me a full body workout. Josh, you seem like an expert in menial <laughs> tasks. <Dude. laughs> uh, it's oh, true though. What sort of rote activity could I do to reach maximum power? Achieve the perfect Stand balance of a checkbook. The more menial a task mm. apparently is, the more it will work mm. you out. So you must subject yourself to the most menial task of all tasks, consciously blinking. This game is speaking to Josh. Checkbook <laughs> would be smart. Almost certainly. But then what's the bottom one? I don't fucking know. If the bottom <laughs> one's charm or fun, then I'm Which fucked. Which are both low, yeah. I mean, well, I would just. Charm would be neither of them sold. Skills, I can so tell I don't you that. think it's charm. Uh, chaos would be more so for the second one, I think. Uh, fuck. I'm gonna go with consciously blinking. 
It was bold. What? Ah. I, I guessed. I went. There's two capitalized words. It might be bold. That's uh -huh. it. It's the entire train of thought. Screaming. What are you talking about? What is this blinking thing? Wait, does she actually not know? You point out her eyelids and how they go up and down over her eyes every 10 seconds or so. Wow, I've never noticed that before. Have I always been blinking? Should I stop? Yeah, the guy's trying to tell me that she is smart and funny. <laughs> yeah. Ah, my eyes are so dry and itchy. I hate this. I suppose this blinking thing is really important. No, this guy, this guy that I'm seeing says that it's uh, bold is creativity and fun. I mean, I'd, I'd buy that at least. I suppose this blinking thing is really important. I should be devoting more time to it. So now you sits and blinks. She's concentrating like super hard on it. Every time you try to speak, she shushes you. Not now, Josh. I can't think and blink at the same time. You're ruining my concentration. Hey, bro, I saw you weren't busy, and I'm about to go play barbell frisbee golf. Want to join me? <laughs> I need to practice catching a 44-pounder with my teeth without breaking my molars. <laughs> what? Sounds fun, Scott, but no can do. I'm too busy remembering to blink. Oh, weird. That sounds hard. I'll catch up with you later, then. Okay, Dahlia, listen. I'm having a coven-related emergency. And oddly enough, this particular emergency calls for a tall, buff, blue demoness to solve it. No other person will do. Believe me, I looked into it. So, even though I had never thought I'd say this, would you like to temporarily join the coven for... Stop right there, Joy. Join the coven is my life's ambition, but I'm really caught up with this whole blinking thing and can't be distracted right now. Oh, well, okay then. Have fun doing basic bodily functions, I guess. Dahlia keeps this up for over an hour, during which time you brush up on your yodeling skills and win 20 out of 30 tic-tac-go-toe games with yourself. Ah, I think that's enough. Thanks for the suggestion, Josh. My eyelids have never felt so buff. She's right. Dahlia has achieved the focus levels of a monk, and her eyelids are now powerful enough to create gusts of winds just by blinking very strongly. For your assistance, and because of all that yodeling practice you got in, you gain two creativity and one fun. Nice. Let's so uh, see... Creative. So, what fun. is available right now? Fun, creative, and charm. Yep. Give me fun. Fun. Late. That day at the lake, you start off Super Soaker fight that turns into an all-out war. The enemy team manages to capture the northern section of the lake, but you take a few of their members hostage and learn their empire's weaknesses. You lead a full-scale infiltration. Thousands of soldiers get totally soaked, trademark. It's a bloodbath. After several hours, the enemy team surrenders, and you gain two fun from the Priest Treaty. Peace Treaty. Yay! Yay. Sometimes I talk too fast. You're chilling out on the beach, just relaxing, hanging out, being cool. You don't give a fuck. I know there's anyone else, though, because they're all watching Arabi and Dahlia come charging out of the lake carrying some kind of ancient golden idol. Lifeguards! Lifeguards! We need lifeguards! Oh. Oh. I'll be Where the, the fat fuck? dude. I'll be right. the gargoyle. <laughs> Well, ugh, I thought it would be chill at the lake, but everyone keeps yelling lifeguards, and it's really hushing the vibe. I'm hoping uh, they want us to rescue anyone from the lake. I'm halfway through a bag of Cheetos, and I don't want to lose this precious finger dust. <laughs> yeah, rescue us. Protect us from the lake. But you're not in the lake. Unless... Lake means something different to them than it means to us. Well, you're right. I mean, honestly, what does it occur to us to call some things lake and other things not lake? Stop Damn. doing philosophy. You're lifeguards. Hurry up and guard our lives or I'll murder yours. Whoa, Ravi, you're not killing anybody until I get a lick of that Cheeto dust. Yuck. <laughs> <laughs> Relax, dudes. Uh, what are we supposed to guard your lives from? The sun is shining, the water is calm, an angry mob of lake people is charging into the shore. Think that's the thing we need guarding from. Uh, no way, those guys are totally chill. They only go ever go after people who steal their sacred golden idol. Hey, shouts one of the lake people. Those are the monsters who stole our sacred golden idol. Get them. The oh, they're from Jersey. <laughs> oh. Huh. Man, I think this might be an emergency. Yeah, I swear he watched a train video about this. Yeah, I totally remember not paying attention during a video about this exact situation. I bet the VHS is still in the lifeguard tower. 
You and Ravi and Dahlia follow the lifeguards back to their tower. It's not like you get another option, but the place is full of old tapes. Which is the right one? As Ravi and Dahlia frantically barricade the tower against the mod, you spot the perfect training video for this situation. How to sell anything to an angry mob. Your mob and you. Tips and tricks for doing it the riot way. Hmm. The right way would be boldness. Uh, top one would probably be charm because uh, it's dealing with the. Uh... Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna do the top one. Okay. Yep. I'm pretty good at this. Well, the bottom one couldn't have been boldness then. It had to have been something else. The yeah. bottom one was smart. The, no, the the bottom one was boldness. It no, it can't it have been boldness. Because boldness is her highest. It was because not Because then boldness. Boca would have failed. Just now. Ah. Well, there you go. Well. <laughs> That's the T. That's the T. It must have been smart well, then, because everything else is higher. Well, no, charm. Never mind. Yeah, it was smart. Uh, well, yeah, it was smart. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's quite fine. Read! Ezekiel. Oh, yeah! Uh, that's a good one. Uh, it's weird that we have so many sales videos in here and so many video videos about how to actually save lives. Yeah, I guess it's a good thing we never paid attention in training. Otherwise, we might have gotten confused. Anyway, let's watch that video. You pop the tape in the VCR and are immediately rewarded with some tinny infomercial music. Hi, says the host. I'm Rob Goblin, professional life coach slash criminal, and I'm here to show you how to, how to turn into <laughs> angry mob into an angry mob opportunity. <laughs> Selling to your first angry mob can be intimidating, and for good reason. Mobs are notoriously savvy and well-trained consumers. But closing the deal with this well wild-up riot... Well-armed, you're right. But closing the deal with those riled up riders is easier than you might think. Just remember, A, B, C, A, always, B, B, C, chanting. Always be 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 chanting. Rob Goblin looms closer and closer to the camera, his tiny face bloodshot, screaming louder and louder until the camera goes black. An order form appears on the screen for his next video, how to sell anything from prison. <laughs> no. Well, that didn't seem very effective. That's because you're not an angry mob. Come on, let's try it. Dahlia and Aravi rush outside to face the mob. The lake people raise their pitchforks and hold stones at the ready, but Aravi puts up a hand. Wait. She points to a crab scuttling along the beach. Ah. Buy that crab. <laughs> Buy that crab. <laughs> Buy that crab. Buy that. Buy the crab. Buy that crab. Buy that crab. Chance that. Buy that crab. Buy that crab. It worked. They eagerly rushed to purchase the crab from you. You let them have it for the low, low price of one golden idol. Empowered by your new sales knowledge, you travel the world, selling crabs and other assorted debris to angry mobs across the globe. You, Dahlia, Aravi, and Hex make an extraordinary amount of money, but your true wealth is measured in the friendship you share. Also, two creativity and one fun. My favorite Greg. The sleeping. Greg. Hello, creativity. Okay. Hello. That day, there's a guest speaker at the Monster Scouts HP. She's a Were Eagle Monster Scout here to tell you all about advancing through the levels. Her speech is surprisingly interesting. She started out at Camp Spooky just like you and worked super hard during every single batch. She also hints at some possible foul play, including her murdering a high level scout and wearing her skin as a disguise in order to advance through the ranks. Mm. Sure is inspiring. You're too busy flirting with your friends to dedicate that kind of time to Monster Scouts, but still, her speech instills you with two creativity. Nice. You're wandering aimlessly around the camp, looking for joy for a very important reason completely unrelated to wanting to smooch your cute face, when suddenly... Again? Greg, there you are. I've been wandering around camp looking you for you for a very important reason. <laughs> oh, you know what that means. The, the world is going to end. Oh. Ah. Guess you didn't know what that meant. There's an asteroid headed right for us, and if we don't complete this incredibly complex and epic ritual to alter its path, this could be the end for the whole planet. You dive in to help. Things Just start turn well. The whole plan you burn a pentagram into the ground. Find a place of the ten turtle guardians and hang strands of garlic from every third sycamore tree. By the time we reach the step where you have to get the entire camp to run around in circles shrieking and wailing, which they do with great enthusiasm, it seems like nothing can get in your way. Oh boy. Ah! Oh no, it's the nightmare. I think I did What is all this unsanctioned yeah. running and screaming? Uh. Oh, I thought that said I, but it's not. It's Oh, it's like, an exclamation there. point, yep. There, there is a strict sanction running and screaming only policy at Camp Spooky. Stop these shenanigans at once. The camp director, Miss Weaving, we're performing a magic ritual to save the world from... If you wanted to do magic to save the world, you should have done that earlier in the day when I gave everyone a do magic to save the world break. 
But I didn't I need to do magic to save the world then. I need to do magic to save the world now. Young lady, I am so sick and tired of your generation using magic to solve all your problems. In fact, I'm going to confiscate your magic so you can learn to cope without <laughs> it. That's ridiculous. Uh, magic isn't a thing you could just... Wait, what the fuck? Where did my magic go? Why can't I feel my magic? Oh my god, she did it. Camp Director Miss Weaving took away my magic. Now how are we supposed to save the world from this asteroid? Psh, that's an easy one. You are all about stopping asteroids without using magic. All you have to do is... I know the answer. Turn the Earth into <laughs> <tools. laughs> Betray your usually inclusive nature by passing strict legislator forbidding the immigration of asteroids to Earth. Or treat the cause, not the symptom. Cancel the Ricky Martin concert that the asteroid is undoubtedly coming to Earth to attend. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the top well, one's gotta be smart, right? Probably. Well, so I'm gonna see. go with the bottom one. Alright. Of course, so I, I knew there was some okay, huge yeah, and cool. definitely still culturally relevant event that I would be totally going to if I weren't at camp. There's nothing hotter or more zeitgeist than a Ricky Martin concert. That must be why the asteroid is coming. I hate to get in the way of great art, but if we don't stop the people from hearing Mick Ricky Martin sing tonight, no one will ever hear Ricky Martin sing again. And he's not one of those singers who only sounds good on the radio with autotune. I mean, he was C-H-E and... I don't... I don't know what these mean. <laughs> He was Che in the Evita revival, for Christ's sake. I don't know what that means. Yes, you think to yourself, Could the you? 20... Oh, it's going to explain it to you. Yes, you think to yourself, the 2012 Eleanor Rogers revival of Evita featuring Tony Award Michael Savannah and the bit part of Juan Perot is in fact how most people know icon Ricky Martin. The two of you rush over the concert oh, venue. This is really specific, which is conveniently near the geographically ambiguous location of Camp Spooky. Without Joyce Magic, you're forced to use your boldness, smarts, charm, uniqueness, nerve, and talent to work your way to backstage past security. Between the two of you, plus Valerie items in your pockets left over from the school year, you're able to do it, and before long, you're in Ricky Martin's dressing room. Hey, you. Hi, Mr. Martin. Huge fan. Hate to say this, but you don't need to cancel- you need to cancel tonight's performance. If you don't, an asteroid will strike the planet, killing everyone. Ricky Martin closes his eyes and nods, unsurprised. Who's Ricky Martin? I'm gonna have to Google this. <laughs> I've heard his name, I just don't know who he is. I've... Yeah, same. Singer, He's a singer-songwriter. Um, King of Latin pop and... He, oh, he's a... living La Vida Loca Oh, guy. that was Ricky Ra Okay. Living La Vida I, Loca. Uh, Ricky Barton closes his eyes and nods. Else. Unsurprised. I always knew this game would come. Yeah. This gay. Words are hard. Yeah. <laughs> you, you did? When I sang my first note. The cry of a child entering this world. A messenger spirit of pure light appeared and told me that song would be my gift, but at a great cost. It said that one day when I was burning my brightest, a star even greater than I am would come to wipe out all life, and that its hair would be a beautiful, thick witch. The second you darkened my door with your killing curves and goth aesthetic, I knew you had to be the harbinger. But I made peace long ago with my fate, and I know what I must do. Consider the concert what? canceled, lest we all end up living no Vita of any kind whatsoever, much <laughs> less Loka. <laughs> <laughs> Blessed be, Thick Witch, and Thick Witch's love interest, I assume. With that, you hurry back to camp and report to camp director Miss Weaving. Frankly, the whole worn by a glowing spiritual prophet thing does reek of magic. But, as you were not the one performing it, Miss Johnson, Georgima, I'll consider this lesson learned. Your magic is restored. Thank goodness. Hey, Greg, remember that time Broadway reformer, Disney singer, and occasional pop star Ricky Martin thought we were dating? You know what we must doing. be a great team or something. Or something. Ideally, no, that's something me. being dating. In the meantime, meanwhile, we gained three charms just from being in Ricky Martin's presence and making Joy happy, Ops. Let's trade places. Trade places. No. Josh, go first. Why? Rip. Eat shit, nerds. Also, it's been an hour. We've only gone to the first campfire. Oh, no. I, know. I mean, we, did, we did spend forever. 20 minutes on the intro. Because you motherfuckers wouldn't stop I'm... talking about Josh's Switch. Also, I... also, I'm... Well, it's the most interesting thing that's ever happened to me. Also, I'm going to cuck you, Steven, and I apologize. Yeah. I've made peace with it. But I'm Mothman's sorry. Mothman's here. Oh! Mothman... Mothman's here. You sit down with... You go what? talk to Mothman. It's fine. Yeah, who am I going to talk to? No one, apparently. You sit Damn down it. between a classic Dahlia and Joy. Dahlia's being very intense and excited. And Joy looks like Oops. she'd walk over to a bed of hot coals if it would shut her up. 
Come on, Joy. I'd be a great addition to the coven. I've already memorized all your moves, your favorite catchphrases. I even bought the limited edition Kawaii Third Hope phone case off eBay. What more do I need to do? Uh, how about be a witch? Or having even the slightest bit of foresight and subtlety to your plans? I can be subtle. Look at me, I'm being subtle right now. Watch as I inconspicuously nudge you towards inviting me into the coven. Now please let me into the coven, I want this so badly. We don't need a fourth member. Three is the number of, triple, of the triple goddess, which is not a force that can be broken. Mm. Also, we only have three main character slots available. If we open a fourth, the network will be forced to establish a union. Well, I'm sure there's something I could do. Maybe I could be your body double for the really intense fight scenes. I mean, we're basically twins already. <laughs> No. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, come on. Look, I have a joy wig that I could wear. Is that real please, hair? Please, please put it on. Oh. Hell yeah. I've been collecting it slowly while you slept so that I could be prepared <laughs> for this exact situation. Which should show you just how committed I am to the coven. Joy looks halfway between exasperated and deserved, but God, Dahlia's just so cute when she's irresponsibly passionate about something. You know she's not going to drop this until she gets a satisfactory answer, but which of them do you most want your answer to appeal to the most? You can be a covered sleeper agent, so go to sleep and we'll let you know when you're needed. Coven's last season was too grim. This season we need more sex appeal. You can be the irresistible blue seductress who distracts the villains. That one, I assume. I the bottom one, yes, please. What? But that doesn't... Hell yeah, baby, I'm in! But we don't need a seductress. That role is definitely already... I I it's completely unnecessary. No, it makes perfect sense. I can distract villains with my rippling pectorals and raw sexual energy, <laughs> and you can fight them when they're not paying attention. Okay, but... But what? I mean, you are going to fight them, aren't you? It's not like you're having a torrid affair with any of your <laughs> enemies, right? Uh, nope. What are you talking about? That'd be crazy. No way. Okay, good. Let's talk about some important stuff here. I respect Dimitri, and he's got decent abs, but our relationship probably can't go anywhere beyond platonic. So what do you think the odds are of you convincing the sexy purple gummy bear Liam to be your enemy again? 50%? 80%? <laughs> I mean, I can burn his house down and leave a note saying that the coven did him necessary. <laughs> Anything for the cause. Joy giggles nervously while Dahlia bobbles on about statistics and arson. Hell, maybe if you burn Joy's house down, there's a 100% chance Dahlia will seduce you. Just saying. Greg. You actually can sit by yourself. Uh, I suppose. Sit by yourself or go to Mothman? Uh, what is, does sitting by myself do anything? It gives I you stats. Uh, oh, it gives it you stats. It gives you stats. stats. Or you can go talk to... Uh, like, with you, stats. You can go talk uh, to yeah, Calculester so and Damien. Or Mothman. Or by yourself. Uh, or Damien. Or you could, I guess, go to this one or, if you wanted to be a jackass. You could, you could go cuck. Do you could cuck Boko for no reason, also. These are your options. You Nobody has answered the question of what happened. Like, what the stats. city alone will we get you know. probably a plus three to a stat. Yeah. It's just okay. like a monster it's probably bomb random one. or something. Okay, and what does Mothman do? Mothman, I think he lets. Gets uh, when you... I did it, he let he you start a rumor. I oh, said yeah, yeah. Yeah. He, he made yeah. me. He made me start a rumor, and the rumor gave Steven stats. <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah, yeah, I'll do Mothman. Sounds fun. Okay. Good evening, Greg. I hope you enjoyed your day at summer camp. <laughs> Greg? <laughs> I love him. My so day good. is only just beginning. My people are mostly nocturnal, so I rarely spend time awake during the daylight hours. So while you and our other campmates get to frolic in the sunshine and hear all sorts of juicy, titillating, world-rocking gossip, I am sleeping away in my tent unaware of it all. Which is why I'm hoping you, popular soul that you are, would be willing to tell me a bit of gossip you may have heard through the grapevine. Uh, poor nocturnal moss man. You're not going to deny such a cute giant insect person as gossip, are you? Yeah. Time to concoct some lies and slander, all in the name of being a good friend, of course. Who would you like to gossip about? Who do you want to you gossip about? You can choose about? yourself. You can now, choose yourself. So it's either going to be good or bad, right? I guess. Apparently. Yeah. Well, we don't, I, we've I, really I, my done only it point once. of data is I've done it once on Steven. And it gave him stats. That's all I, I know. I will risk the biscuit and go with soups. Okay. Uh, An Transylvanian sabotage. Transylvanian vampire mosquitoes, cocaine-fueled interpretive dance, big bird, or basic common sense. What? These are These your options. Choose one. Choose one. This, this is, is the choose rumor. One. 
These are your options. Uh, Big Bird. Okay. I guess. Choose one. Lord Poseidon, a giant wriggling maggot, an enchanted frog, a flat earther. Ooh, flat earther. Flat earther. Flat earther. Flat Fill earther. in the blank. Hashtag so blank. So stylish. Uh, so based. So, so lame. So pog. Sajima. So pog. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, well, that's. I was gonna say, so Sajima is what I was saying. <laughs> too late. All right. Well, it wasn't. Ha hashtag Sojima. <laughs> wow, I slept through that. I can't believe it. I'll have to pull an all day or just to spread this news around, but it'll be worth it. See you. You make the conscious decision to spread lies around camp. Great move, asshole. Anyway, you overhear your rumor being spread. Yes, yes, yes. Who the fuck Who? is this? This is the uh, mascot for Roll20.net. Huh. Oh, wow. did, did you ever hear about the time Biff wrote a tweet that went totally viral? Apparently, back in 2016, Biff drank one too many wine coolers and tweeted out, Sorry, but the concept of Big Bird is totally problematic. Hashtag Sojima. The tweet blew up overnight, and nobody could shut up about <laughs> Biff's hot take. I heard hashtag Sojima even started trending. Of course, such a spicy opinion is going to receive some backlash. Apparently, the people you don't want to piss off community was pretty unhappy with what Biff had to say. But then a viral account run by a flat earther tweeted, Yo, at Bithk is totally in the right. Want to talk about it more <laughs> in my podcast? Hashtag Sajima. So Bithk agreed to be on a flat earther's podcast, and apparently they have been denying ever since. What do you think about that? Maybe we shouldn't cancel somebody based on a tweet they wrote so many years ago, but it's still something to think about. Well, viral flame tweeting is gossip. Ooh! Wow. It was oh, more no. fun. Oh. Wow! You hit with minus four fun, huh? You oh! Said negative one fun! You sit on a log by yourself. Look at you avoiding romance in a dating sim. Now, the suspense. Will you remain forever alone or will someone else take pity on you? The mystery. Watch, watch you get three <laughs> fun. Fucking nothing happens. Okay. Wow. Oh my god. Can, can Boko like, also sit by you? Is that what it means? I guess. Oh. Hmm. Oh. She won't, huh. but hypothetically, I guess she, she could. She won't, but... No. We'll try it some other time. You wander over to the campfire, hoping to peer pressure someone into making you a s'more. And when you find Milo, Aravi, and Hex, they're all gathered around with notebooks. What up, what up, what hey, Boko, check it out. We're doing poetry. It's like normal sentences, but deep. Exactly, Hex. As a reaper with the finest taste in living arts, of course, I am a poetry stand. In my infinite compassion, I thought that poetry could be a nice exercise for Aravi to connect with her feelings and embrace them now with a little more joy. <laughs> As opposed to her usual Same. blind rage. Come on. Come on, Aravi. Poetry is tight. I mean, usually I express myself through flavor of Pringles I'm eating, but Milo's shown me I can also express those feelings with words. <laughs> That's wonderful, Hex. You see, Ravi, dear, there's poems for everyone. Like, epics are poems, too. An epic sounds right up your alley, doesn't it? I just, I just really don't get it. I mean, my grandmother used to read me the Mahabharata when I was what? a kid, and that was cool. It might count as an epic, I guess. And I'm trying to put my feelings into this poem, but the only feeling I have is a deep desire to win. You have a desire to win? What do you want to win? The battle against your own vulnerability? Get good. No, you doof. I want to win the poetry, obviously. Ravi, this is not a competition. Poetry is the opposite of competitive. You're insulting Sylvia Plath by implying otherwise. Who? As usual, she was Milo is just lying to my face so they can get an advantage in this poetry bio. Nice try, Milo. That trick won't work on me. Besides, I've told you this is over and over. Everything is a competition. Everything? What about, I don't know, sleeping? Yes, it is. It's a competition who can get the most of it. Or you can do a challenge run to see who can survive on the least sleep possible. Ugh, well, what about yoga? I a competition for who's the most bindy and sweaty. Duh. Wait, you guys, listen to this poem I just wrote. Bagels. They used to be everywhere, but now they are inside me. It's a metaphor for consumerism. <laughs> <laughs> Milo's getting frustrated with Aravi's lack of vulnerability, and Aravi's about to physically fight Milo. Intervene before someone's feelings get hurt. Ever heard of slam poetry? It's poetry you can turn into a blunt whip and defeat your opponents with. Whoever can club an enemy to death with a <laughs> is the winner. 
Ah, oh, but you haven't been writing, even been writing poems. These are just walkthrough guides. If anyone here is a winner, it isn't you. Oof. Oof. Top Oof. one. Top one. It's top, top one. That top, uh, that fucking top bottom one's savage and really funny, though. Yeah. Well, did you just say blunt weapons? I specialize in blunt weaponry. No, 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 Boko. Slam poetry is a form of poetry reading that rewards the most ham-fisted performance possible. It's totally and Aravi is no longer listening. She's rolled up her poems like a newspaper and she's using them to beat the shit out of a pair of nearby goblins. Those goblins were clearly just taking a union-approved smoke break from their normal gig of being dungeon monsters, but Aravi doesn't listen when they insist they're off-duty. Even though the goblins are screaming in pain, they do seem to like Aravi's poetry. If we're gonna die, at least we were beaten to death by... by... such beautiful words! Ah, uh, sick! Check out the loot I got from these dang goblins! Two whole packs of cigarettes! Noise! Do you even smoke? Uh, no, I can craft, hmm, I guess a cigarette helmet? Is that a thing? Well, that uh, sounds like a walk, uh, a, uh, Dead Rising thing. Well, I'm scandalized by this violence, but, uh, do you feel a bit better now, Aravi? Ah, uh, yeah. It kind of felt good to let it all out like that. Maybe poetry really is a good outlet for anger and other bad feelings. And stuff. I finally understand poetry. It truly really is a beautiful art. I'm so happy we're finally on the same stanza. Yes, a beautiful art just like Taekwondo, or Jiu-Jitsu, or cutting someone's head off with a long sword. You know what, Milo? I think I'll definitely be writing more poetry in the future. Especially if I run into any more low-level creatures. Oh, that's adorable. I'm so happy I could help. And also, I was right from the beginning and I knew it. Knew Spoko, it. you know that teaching Aravi to beat people with poems just to gain her affection is super irresponsible, right? Yeah. Being irresponsible is what I'm all about. Fist bump! Heck yeah, everybody's happy. Except those goblins who are near death. But you didn't come here to fuck a goblin. Unless there's some sort of super secret <laughs> ending for that. In which case, your game. <laughs> A what? No oh, one sits yeah. with you. <laughs> you spent the night alone on your sad little forever oh, alone no. log. I mean, it is really such a big deal <laughs> after all. Apparently it was. From that day on, everyone treated you differently, as if your loneliness from that night was a contagious disease. Sheesh, young people can be really mean and stupid, huh? You lose too fun and too fucking hell. Oh no! <laughs> Steven! Dude! Drinking time. Get fucked. That weekend you visit your good pal Juan. He knows a thing or two about getting hey, wasted. Where is? Bueno, bueno. Look who's here! I was just experimenting with these drinks here. I was about to throw them away, but I have a feeling you're reckless enough to give them a try, right? What about this one? Josh, would you like the Josh. double gift? No idea if I got the recipe mm. right. Wanna try okay. it? Otherwise, yeah. you always have the mystery box. The mystery box. Hang on, we gotta get Boca's yeah. opinion. Yeah, one second. You sometimes she tells you what does, and sometimes she just tells you to drink it. Yeah, it's one great. second. Bop, bop. Okay, one second. Box could be anything, even a double gift. <laughs> could be anything. Okay, so that's. I think. Oh, by the way, my Xbox One controller works again. Nice. Oh, nice. What'd you uh, do? There is not an entry I, for a double I left it alone gift. For seven oh well, then let's and drink it. Now it works. Take it. Drink See it. what it does. Yeah, no, totally. I was testing your common sense. And your pass. Your prize is the drink you chose. Greg. Nice. The full moon. Ooh, the oh, full moon. I got the recipe, good one. right? Wanna try I it? Miss Greg. Otherwise, you always have the, full moon, dude. the mystery box. It's like a it's like a stat. It like buffs all your stats or something cool like that. It's it's good. I remember there being good. There is nothing in here for the full moon either. No, I got it last time we played. Yeah. It like buffs all your stats or something crazy like that. Oh, nice. Oh, all stats increased by one for the players. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. You want it. You want it. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, no, totally. I was testing your common sense. You pass your, dr your drink. You dr drink. Pair of beer boots. Whoa. Nice. The mystery box. Oh, no. What is pair of uh, beer boots do? Okay, okay. we do have one for this one. Oh, wow. You visit certain locations. One location chosen to ride, and some gives you double stats. Yeah. Okay, I'll take it. Yeah, so a random location will give you double stats specifically. Yeah, that's, that's what me. that's what three people said. What do you say when you take the bone of the bird juice? <laughs> and juice? Oh, you've got to drink the bone hurting juice. <laughs> it's a mystery. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, I, I'm not. Ezzy, I have a guide open. I'm not points. taking that. 
But give so me the box. The box, the box, the box. But, it, but it's bone you know hurt. Bone hurt it's it's a margarita. Oh, margarita. Ah. Yeah, that, was, that one's pretty good. I hope you're happy with it. No yeah, refunds. So you want to drink a margarita, eh? To think that by drinking a brain, you'll absorb its smarts is a bit simplistic. But there is what actually happens. How comes Razor at its finest? Smart go up. Smart go up. The full moon is a very powerful beverage. Not just you, but all of you need to take sips from it carefully. It will open your souls to the beautiful full moon we have tonight, and its power will show all of your stats, even if it's just a bit. Nice. Hey. Thanks. Thanks, Swizzy. The double gifts are so yeah. generous of you. A beverage designed to be gifted. Choose a friend you'd want to grace with my humble concoction. The person will gi be gifted nicely. Please choose me. Oh. Swissy I will choose Steven so because he's been getting shit on. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that would have been a time to use my betrayal card, I'll tell you that. Yeah, well, you, you need to speak up. Eh, it's you, not... You it think was, you can handle a pair of beer boots? You gotta slap that down. Thanks to these babies, you can now choose a location and drunk walk all over it and you will kill you become a true expert. As that, anyone could end up earning twice as many stats from visiting it. Oh, cool. Hope you can stomach that. Happy trails. Let's trade Neat. places. Let's trade places. Trade places. Hey. Huh? Random. Why? Thirth. Hey. This game's trans. Second probably. Earth. Second Earth. Second Second Earth. <laughs> Double bold. <laughs> yeah, Finally. Dude. You're welcome. Finally. Uh, I've got I'm just gonna keep going bold, I guess then. If I don't. I obviously don't need fun if I have enough bold, right? That's how it works. Uh, I think it's you need a certain yeah. amount of both usually. Oh. It's, usually it's, uh, it's uh, usually an amount of both, yeah. That day, while you're hiking through the woods, an angry gnome steps into your path. Halt, giant beast! He cries. If this passage you seek, you must first answer my riddles three. Riddle number one: How is a raven like a writing desk? Oh, I'm like a writing desk. Oh, tough call, but you give your answer. You punt the gnome into the sky and continue <laughs> on your merry way. Apparently, that was the correct response because no one else tries to fuck with you. You gain two smarts. Nice. Afterwards, you're hanging out with your number one summer crush, Joy. It's National Fondly Reminisce Upon the Past Day, so she's flipping through the pics of her phone with you. Oh, this was back from season three, right after we beat that mutant spider. Faith looks so cute in this one. And look at that awesome Fleetwood Mac t-shirt I'm wearing. That t-shirt was so cool. It was vintage from the 78 tour. Stephen Nicks blessed it herself. Whatever happened to that shirt? Did I sacrifice it to the goddess or something? Hmm. Oh, wait, I remember exactly where I left it. Fuck. Joy makes a mysterious phone call. She starts asking about the Fleetwood Mac t-shirt. I know who it is. But the person on the other end of the line is obviously <laughs> not being chill about it. Listen, Axorax. Oh, I guess that's not... I thought it was going to be Dimitri. <laughs> I know things ended badly between us, but can you please just give me back my Fleetwood Mac t-shirt? I specifically oh, remember leaving it in your evil lair. I know you know which t-shirt I'm talking about. I didn't leave multiple t-shirts in your lair. No, there is definitely no need to discuss it in person. Do not portal here. Suddenly a magical portal opens. An objectively sexy centipede person emerges and they are giving off <laughs> palpably villainous vibes. Joy. Oh. Joy, baby, I've come to speak with you in person, just like you wanted me to. You look as lovely as that day I wrapped you in my bug silk. No, Axorax, I specifically said that I did not want to talk to you in person. You're doing that thing again where you gaslight me into spending time with you, which is bullshit. Ugh, Biff, can meet my ex, Axorax. They're a magical evil centipede person I defeated in season three. I know they look hot, but don't let your guard down. They mind-controlled everyone in Philadelphia and tried to make all the citizens jump into a pit of centipede venom. What? Oh, you make me sound oh, so evil, Joy. Reference. But that's all that passed now, gorgeous. We should focus on the present and this very important t-shirt debacle. Why don't we just ditch this third wheel? You and I can go for coffee and talk it over. Or perhaps we can enjoy a romantic dinner. Do any restaurants around here serve pre-chewed aphids? Uh, Axorax, if I get one coffee with you, do you promise to immediately hand over the shirt? Show me the shirt right now before I waste my time. Oh yes, let me check the inside of my carapace. Oops, silly me, looks like I forgot to bring the shirt. Guess we'll have to keep hanging out until my portal spell recharges. I've told you so many times that I'm not okay with us hanging out because we always end up getting back together. It's a toxic cycle, but fuck it, I really want that t-shirt. Axorax is stressing out your potential thick goth GF. Unacceptable, get that Fleetwork Mac to you for joy by any means necessary. 
Set up a black market exclusively for buying and selling Joy's belongings. You'll trade for the t-shirt. <laughs> Call the police and send out an Amber wow. Alert for the t-shirt. Xbox can't hide from the power of a vigilant community. Hmm. 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 Top one's probably smart. smarts. Good news yep. is neither of these are fun. <laughs> Actually, yeah. that's I bad. I feel like the top one has to be yeah. smarts, right? Yeah, smarts in the bottom is probably bold, if I had to guess. It could be charm. The bottom one's, forget, yeah, the bottom one's probably like charm or something because it mentions community. But the, I feel like the top one's your better bet. It was yeah. bold for some reason, bold. whatever. Bold! Okay. What? Okay. Well, good news. The, the bottom, oh, the bottom no, one yeah, was creative. Good it's news. Crime. The bottom one was creative and fun. <laughs> You're gonna make Joy's dreams come through. Through the dark powers of supply and demand, you get to work right away on your illegal Joy-themed black market. A few hours later, the black market is up and running. Literally everything on sale was once owned or touched by Joy. It's super fucking creepy. Disturbingly, it's also pretty popular. Turns out the coven has some dedicated fans, and lots of magical beings want gently used witch items. Come get Joy's genuine, authentic spell herbs found in her trash, screams one creepy salesman. I've also got Joy's chapstick that she lost on a road trip by a trade. This dark market is a heaven on earth for joy connoisseurs such as myself. I'm certain there shall be some merchandise I'm quite interested in acquiring. Luckily, I've got some very valuable joy paraphernalia. I didn't want to let go of this Fleetwood Mac t-shirt so soon, but if I see something that really catches my eye... <laughs> yes, Axorax showed up, just like you planned. You give the signal, and the cops bust the place. They arrest everyone in sight for being a creep. No, you all misunderstand. I am not a creep. I'm just a humble human centipede. You can always trust a human centipede. The police send the mm. creeps to creep jail and confiscate the items to return to Joy. The cops also told Joy what a good job you did, which was nice of them. What a Holy shit, this is amazing. Biff, you got all of my stuff back. Look, there's my first snow book and the chapstick I lost to Faith's car on the road trip episode. Mm. And oh my god, it's the free, my Fleetwood Mac t-shirt. Here it is, yes. I can feel Stevie's powerful witch blessing radiating over me. Thanks a lot, Bifk. You were super chill about my very clingy centipede person X. You're pretty great, huh? The mayor also awards you three smarts as a reward for your outstanding work on Operation Black Market Creep Raid. Also, you made Joy super happy. Yay! Greg. Greg! Uh, where would Greg like to go? Oh, I have a second one there. Uh, somewhere smart, unless you've already done it. I did. Fuck. Yeah. Uh... Bitch. Fucking, uh, fuck you. Don't you need creative, uh, though? Creative. Or is, or is that too hard? I've got time. Give me some creativity. Alright. That day, the Monster Scouts hike around the camp, cleaning up litter to respect nature and stuff. Nobody but Coach gives a damn about kicking out of trash, but does quickly become a contest to find the coolest garbage. Some find used condoms, others find weirdly shaped fruit. You somehow find a Rembrandt. It's an original. The mystery of how the red brand ended up there will go on to trigger the most epic summer adventure you will all go on during this summer. But it won't happen on screen. But you still gain creativity just by looking at it. So magnificent. You meet with Joy to help her practice her dramatic looks when suddenly your nose detects the unmistakable scent of... Dimitri! Oh, he's here! <laughs> he's here! Indeed, my little sometimes full and definitely not potential love interest. No, no, that's not what you smelled at all. It smelled much more like Coach in a bear costume. Bear attack! Bear attack! I'm a bear oh, and no. I'm attacking! Don't oh, worry, God. I'm not actually a bear. I'm just your good old high school coach who cares a lot about bear safety. I know you're not actually a bear, Coach. Can't you see I'm busy having a climactic and steamy showdown with my sometimes foe and definitely not secret crush? Yes, be gone, foolish were tiger. What do we care for bear <laughs> safety when the very fate of the world hangs in the balance? What do we care for bear safety? What do we care for bear safety? Oh, kids, you need this bear safety drill more than I safety? thought. Fact, 100% of fatal bear attacks result in the death of one or more people. <laughs> that statistic is tautological. Fact, 100% of bear attacks happen when at least one bear is present. Where did you get these bear facts? Fact, bears do not pee during hibernation. That's actually a pretty interesting fact. But there aren't any real bears here. And even if there were, Dimitri is far more dangerous than a bear. <laughs> oh, really? Then explain why I, your coach who cares deeply about your well-being, am dressed in a bear costume and not a Dimitri costume. Joy's clearly not going to beat Coach with logic, and she's not going to beat Dimitri at all if you don't help. But how can you prove to Coach that Dimitri is the bigger priority? Assist Coach in creating a taxonomy that properly assesses the dangerousness of every single animal so he can truly see that vampire lords beat bears. Convince Mark. Coach that Dimitri is actually a bear. 
<laughs> charm, probably. Mm. The top one's yeah, gotta be one. smart. The top one has to be smart. It's too many So, so uh, the I'll bottom the... one's safe. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the bottom one. Dimitri? A bear? Charm. No, it couldn't be. God, no, it but... totally is. I mean, if you could be a were tiger in a bear suit, why can't Dimitri be a bear in a sexy vampire suit? You two have opened my eyes. The bears have become even craftier than I expected. There's no one going to ask me whether I'm a bear, because I'm not. There's no room for a bear inside this felt yet chiseled package. That's exactly what a bear would say. Well, is it at all? Because I'm 99% sure I'm not a bear. Only 99? Why not 100? Or 110? Well, a worldly weary nihilist such as myself must maintain a healthy sense of skepticism at all times in order to combat the crushing uncertainty of this bleak world. Or, you're a bear that has disguised itself so well, it's convinced itself it's not a bear. Think about it, Dimitri. It would explain a lot. Like what? Well, for one thing, you don't go outside during the day at all in winter. Hibernate much? I'm a vampire! That's a vampire thing! And bears have very sharp teeth. Just like you! Again, vampire! But to me, <laughs> haven't you ever considered that bears are just vampires with more body hair? What? I'm not a bear! Am I? I'm not, am I? I I have to go wax my whole body, but you haven't seen the last of me, mortals! Dimitri vanishes in a puff of oh confusion. Coach pats you and Joy <laughs> on your backs. You well, looks like I was wrong. You two really are prepared to handle a bear attack. You certainly handled that one. I'd like to go back to whatever you were doing. Remember, don't look a gift bear in the mouth. In fact, don't look any bear in the mouth. I admit that's not the tactic I would have chosen. Perhaps, yes. perhaps your unorthodox tactics will make you a welcome addition on my future adventures. Maybe as a guest star. A guest star spot? That's the spot reserved for your super hot love interest. Plus, you can shorten it to G-spot. Sweet deal. You get two charm and one boldness. Josh. <laughs> Double it's boldness, me, I so... assume. No, probably not. What? Well, you, I, I have to start getting fun, right? Yep. Probably. And you, uh, and you probably. can. Uh, I love power maxing one stat, but we'll go for fun. To you the decide lake. to bring a metal detector to the like lake that cut, day. Right? You scour the beach for buried treasure. You find a keychain, a tin That's box right. of stale cookies, which you eat anyway. A glowing chalice that the Knights Templar come to confiscate for some reason. But best of all, you manage to find some genuine silver-plated too fun. Score. Yes. You meet up with Calculester and Dahlia to help them objectively calculate oh, how goggles. best Dahlia's summer is so far. <laughs> Let's see. Your meaningful camp experiences quotient is slightly above the mean compared to last year's results. Your ratio of time and nature to important realizations about life and society is about average. Also, your watts of solar radiation absorbed per square meter of skin is off the charts. Haha, <laughs> excellent! No, that last one is that actually not excellent. Did he just fucking excellent. scream? <laughs> it means you are at severely elevated risks of skin cancer. You should wear more sunscreen. The only sunscreen I need is these muscles! That is both technically and grammatically incorrect, but I've learned by now not to argue with you about these things. That's the spirit. Now what can I do to make my summer even more best? Well, by my calculations, your main area of improvement is the lake. Hey, Fambi. That is why I brought you here. You see, your aquatic engagement score is below average this month, and thus... But I can't go swimming! I just ate an energizing, nutritious meal! And swim within 20 minutes of eating is not acceptable! Also, yeah, this is definitely a sea run ending. Oh my god! Wait, is God, it? Did somebody say swimming? Scott, what are you doing out there in the lake? Swimming, I think. The problem is, I forgot how to do it. Was this before or after you swam out into the middle of the lake? After? That's why I'm in such a pickle, bro. <laughs> Can you not simply repeat the steps that got you to the center of the lake, but in reverse? I don't know, let me try! Scott faces away from the shore and flails his arms backwards, attempting to rewind <laughs> himself onto the shore. <laughs> it's not very effective. <laughs> Someone's gonna have to help him, but Dahlia just ate, Calculester isn't waterproof, and you skipped swimming class to take CPR twice because you thirsty. Looks like your only hope is to shout out some swimming advice before Scott finally dies of being an idiot. 
Swimming is just like speaking Mandarin Chinese, except instead of speaking, it's swimming, and instead of Mandarin Chinese, it's water. Just remember what you did last week when you suddenly forgot how to swim. Hmm. Um. Hmm. Um. I don't know. I have Mandarin no idea. <laughs> that one's hard. Sounds like smart. It's probably smart. But... Which is your Probably lowest, smart. so be, if that one's smart, it's the other one. Lowest. Last week when you suddenly forgot how to swim. Oh, yeah. If the know. bottom one is charm, then I'm fu I'll yeah. go with the bottom one. Fuck it. It's probably not charm. I don't remember. It was smart. Oh, fuck. Which means the other one was something else. I'm Rip. trying, but I can't. I'm it's remembering things like swimming because I forgot how to swim. You. Yes, friend Scott. We are aware. Allow me to create an immersive projection of what happened last week in order to refresh your memory. Initiating memory hologram, please stand by. Projection begins now. Guys, help! I forgot how to swim! It's okay, Scott. Just remember what you did last week when this happened. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember what I did last week! Never fear, friends. <laughs> I shall create an immersive oh, no. projection of what happened last week so as to refresh your memory. Projection begins now. Help! What is swimming? <laughs> Stay calm, Scott. <laughs> what did you do last week? <laughs> <laughs> I think last exactly. week you told me to remember what I did the week before, and the calculator played a projection of what happened, and which you told me to remember what happened. Error, error, scenario too dumb, infinite recursion, stack overflow. Calculus just starts smoking and falls over. One of his hands falls in the lake, electrifying the entire thing and sending Scott skyrocketing back to shore. Hey, you did it! You saved Scott! When Cal wakes up and sees how many fish he was responsible for killing, though, he's anything but happy. You lose two creativity and one charm for breaking him. <laughs> Come on. Oh, no. How was I supposed to think that remember what you did last week before you forgot was, was the smart? smart. <laughs> oh. Compared it's to learning Mandarin so Chinese. It's the bottom right boldness. Yes, yep. it is. Do it. We're doing it. It's double boldness. While wandering through Haunted Manor, you're ambushed by a group of evil spirits. You put up a good fight, but there's just too many of them, and they run away with your immortal soul. Luckily, you always knew this day oh, would no. come, and you replaced your immortal soul with a beanie baby years ago. Good foresight on you part. You gained four boldness. On you part. On you part. Later, you're searching for the manor's most part. elusive ephemeral being of all, a working cell phone signal. But instead, you find a Ravi and Damien playing poker with some haunted tarot cards. You need to learn from the pros. Ha! Royal flush. Hand that immortal soul over, baby. Whatever. I never said it's my immortal soul. I just traded a hobgoblin ten rupees for this thing, so that jokes on you. You have con no control over mine. Oh, he was just gonna drink it. Nice. I was in a soul snacking phase before I discovered my one true love, the everything bagel. Ah, uh, this sucks. Hey, Boko. Have any souls you want to get? Wait. Have any souls you want to give me so I can get drunk and forget about how tired and bored I am? These two took a bed from joy that they couldn't stay awake in the haunted manor for 24 hours. Why did that peak? Clearly, the shot Damien and I needed a greater challenge after we competed to see who could survive multiple stab wounds the longest. Hmm. But it's so lame in here, it's impossible to stay awake. The discordant screaming of the damn spirits sounds exactly like the lullaby my dad used to sing me as a kid. That was a sentence. Yeah, and the bloodthirsty voices in my head are repeating lest we kill your father are starting to give me ASMR. I tried chatting up the cursed paintings on the walls, but all they ever talk about is what they did to deserve being imprisoned in oil on canvas for eternity. Yawn. So we'll see. So we'll see. Hey, Boko, why don't you help us not keel over? Either entertain me with your antics or by letting me burn off your eye. It's gotta be one. It's always nice to be needed. What can you do to keep these sexy idiots from nodding off? Discuss the current injustices and problem situations so you can all stay woke. Binge all 32 Shrek movies in one night. That's... Hell yeah. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, let's see what my... Pop culture is normally fun, right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna be politics. The top one. Okay. Smart. Okay, love it. I'm down. What are we discussing? The execution penalty? The importance of giving your healers as much praise as your DPS? Does anyone praise DPS? No, <laughs> no one praises DPS. <laughs> Fake gamer. Hey, how dare. 
The way performative masculinity punishes traditionality or wait, traditionally? traditionally feminine interests. Shut up. I said it. Traditionally feminine interests and makes it difficult for a supposed tough guy to pursue beauty and fashion. That's oddly specific. Really? That was a question. Uh, I mean, fire, arson. Let's talk about arson rights. How about none of the above? You propose a topic complex enough to keep you woke for hours. Damaging stereotypes in the Slenderman community. Oh yeah, I get you. Mm. Like, why do all Slendermen have to be slender? Where's the love for the Slendermen who have a little extra chub on their freakishly long arms? And why are they called Slendermen? Not only that, it's sexist, but it's completely disregards the complexity of the gender spectrum. That's crazy. Why is language so gendered anyway? Must we all be human, or slender man, or even D-man? I don't think you know how to spell demon, but I see your point. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention the harmful racist stereotypes slender men get on a daily basis. Preach, everyone assumes they're dangerous just based on their height and the lifeless pallor of their skin. Ah, take Mr. Slenderman, for example. He lost his job at Spooky High last year because of some jackass photoshopped him in the background of kids' photos. That's fucked up. Nobody thought to fact check the photos. Why do cops always assume that just because someone's a Slenderman, they're automatically causing harm? Holy shit, you guys. I'm, like, wide awake now. I don't even care about the bed anymore. I guess I never gave this topic the critical thought it deserved. It's actually really interesting and a great way to stay awake. Well, duh. Everyone knows that social politics and controversial opinions were invented to keep people awake during haunted house stakeouts. This very enlightening discussion successfully keeps all of you awake through the night, which means you win plus one bet, forcing joy to award you creativity and one smart. Wow. Trade places! Okay, Finally! First. It's Greg time. Except the second. Again. Let me Where would you like stats. to go? You have any. I would like to get the smarts. Well. <laughs> Give me smart. Give oh, me the smart. You have so much smart already! I haven't gone to smart ever! You, you do have 14 11. smarts! You oh, wait, 11. no, you don't. It's you have 11. 11, but it is quite Yeah, high. I need more. Well, we don't know the, the stat requirements. I have to go hard. D delicious edible mushrooms. Well, you think they're edible anyway. I mean, you ate them. On a completely unrelated note, you also meet an ancient, all-powerful god who's timelessly intelligent and also really into vaporwave for some reason. You gain two smarts from a dope conversation with the vaporwave god. Hey, vaporwave's all right. Afterwards, you're very... I think maybe her problem is that she knows too many people who like vaporwave and all of them suck. Oh, and they're all named Vimon. And they're all named Vimon. Nice. <laughs> Afterwards, you're very busy making That's a friendship a recent, problem. but spooky when you see Aravi power walking through your location with a look of fierce determination in her eyes. Power walking. Okay, I slew the dragon of Tinger Mountain, found the incredibly rare rupee that somehow grows inside a tree, but only during the eclipse, and only if you've leveled up. I tripped the jackal up and got the mouse's glasses back so I could trade him the seed for the bead and put it on the altar under the well after I drained it using the- This is a King's Quest puzzle. <laughs> and I cleaned the gene stables and picked up wizard farts dry, dry cleaning. What's next? Oh, sounds like Aravi is hand having quite the day. You ask her why she's doing all these random tasks. Come on. Uh, don't get me started. She's doing side quests, helping everyone fight their enemies or find rare items. But you can't take the five minutes to help me find a pizza for my side quest? I already told you ordering pizza isn't a quest with high enough XP reward. We'll do that after I do one re last real side quest for the day. Let's Want to come along and help out? Two heads are better than one. Hey, I thought I was your second head. I'm even keeping track of everything like you asked. Unbelievable. Oh great, let's see what I have left to. Robert the Robber should date Thomas the Raccoon, my lord. Hex. These are just shipping charts between all my side quest prospects. What's your point? My point is a list of who should fight and who should fuck and a flowchart of love triangles does nothing for me in terms of figuring out my next move. Well, all those side quests are doing nothing for me in terms of finding me a pizza, so I guess we're even. <laughs> Look, if I have to power through all these side quests, I may as well add some drama through my shipping flowchart so it plays like some sort of telenovela in my mind. This voice is hurting my throat. Luckily for Aravi, evaluating bonkers Aww. courses of actions based on what stats they'll give you is practically the only thing you do. Looking at Hex's notes, it's immediately clear which side quest will unlock the ultimate goal, making Aravi smile. 
Helped the local mayor open a TikTok account so he could bond with his teenage son. Collect ten turnips for the town's guard, which totally not using them to pleasure himself. Mm. It mm. is gone. I think... The bomb was probably fun, right? Because it involves... No, I think it's probably bold. Because it involves a man fucking himself with turnips, yes. <laughs> mm. yeah, I think I'm gonna go with uh, the bot on one. Okay. There's an awkward silence, yeah, and fun. you wonder if maybe you overdid it by adding the not using to pleasure himself part, which they all <laughs> seem to realize he me meant he totally was. This will be fun. I live for the scandal of it all! Gardex turn up OTB, let's go! <laughs> as long as I get my loot and XP, I'm always collecting random shit for random shit heads, and I've never questioned what they're doing with it. And I'm not about to start now. It's easier to just it's assume. Feed. It's easier just to assume it's an Oculus. 60 or here are five apples there, two gallons of lube and a leather mask. A dragon <laughs> cock, you know, Whoa. it's just normal stuff. Roger, let's go collect some turnips for stew, maybe. You agree to buy into this mass delusion and go get some very normal and non sexual <laughs> turnips. You give cheese to the psychic hog who tells you how to fight the Gru in the dark before giving you hot cocoa for the snake for a back rub and somehow at the end you have like 600 turnips. The logic is convoluted but it makes for a fun bonding adventure and at the end of the day you find yourselves presenting the blushing guard with a fuck ton of turnips. Don't worry, we don't judge. Which vegetables you stick up your butt is none of our business. Oh no, says the guard looking mortified. When I said romantic prospects, that wasn't a euphemism. I just wanted to build myself a nice turnip boyfriend to go on dates with. The life in the town's guard can get lonely, and lately most social interactions just make me anxious. Good evening, turnip boyfriend. Don't you look dashing? Oh my god. Oh, oh my turnip god. Boyfriend. Look at <laughs> the turnip boyfriend is real. Uh, oh my god. Uh, Produce uh, for me? You shouldn't have. Thai food in a movie? I'd love to go. Is, is he talking to the po turnip boyfriend too? You're so nice, Mr. Town Guard. I'll always accept you as you are, and I'll shower with you unconditional love and omega-3 fatty acids. I live for the plot twist of it all! Shockingly, I think the butt thing would have been less bizarre, but this is somehow actually pretty cute. They're a good couple. Mm. Hey, since you're the one that suggested it, maybe you'll be my turn of tape one day. <laughs> the mere suggestion gives you turn up two ch charm and turn up one smarts, but thankfully work just like the regular stats. Uh, Greg. Greg. Greg would like Greg. to do smarts, I bet. I was gonna go smarts. I'm sure you were, but I guess I can't. Suck my nuts. Suck your own nuts. I can't. Creativity. I'm not that flexible. <laughs> That day in Monster Scouts, you all learn to identify different animal tracks. First, you practice identifying bears and deer, but then you start having to identify way more specific tracks. You identify the tracks of Sculptar, half-human, half-sculptor. You follow the tracks until you find the legendary beast. The Sculptar teaches you the basics of sculpture. You gain two creativity. You're kicking back with Milo and Joy in one of the classrooms, listening to an interesting discussion. Look, all I'm saying is that just because someone else isn't you doesn't mean you can't be them. Why limit yourself? And all I'm saying is it doesn't count as a selfie if someone else takes it, so no, I am not going to take a selfie of you. Kid, stop being mellow and carefree! It's time to learn! But what is time, really? And for that matter, what is learning? That's not what we're learning about today, Milo. Tell me, you two. Don't you think- do you think you're prepared to survive in the wild? I'm not answering this. If we say no, you're going to give us a whole lecture, and if you say yes, you're going to t loudly correct us and then give the lecture anyway. Well, I can't do any of that if you don't answer my question, can I? Hey, good point. Oh, fine. Gee, coach, I think we're pretty prepared for- WRONG! You're not prepared at all! Do you even know how to tell if it's going to rain later? That's easy. I'll just check my nope. phone right now. It says- WRONG! What if a possum suddenly ambushed you and swallowed your phone whole? These are things that could happen. Real things! Well then, as much as it would pain me, I would have to slaughter the possum and use its entrails to divine the future through the ancient art of Haru Spicy like I do when it's absolutely necessary. Wrong! What if a huge turtle jumped out of a bush and swallowed the possum? And if the turtle didn't have any guts because its insides were filled with confetti? Well, I already made several good gifts out of co- Okay, good- <sighs> Sorry, my brain just exploded. Well, I've already made several good <laughs> gifts of coach wrong. screaming wrong at us. Imagine a world in which my phone is eaten by two animals is giving me anxiety. Does anyone know a way to put an end to this exhausting <laughs> thought experiment? Of course you do. You just need to offer a coach-approved method for finding out if it's going to rain later. Check if Nostradamus had anything to say about today's weather. According to Reddit, what? if you play any Iron Maiden record backwards, it gives you a very localized weather forecast. 
Ooh. <laughs> well, time to try. That one feels uh, like creativity, perhaps. That, that that's like what I'm thinking, so I'm going to go for it. Okay, I do happen to have an Iron Maiden record <laughs> on me, because there are like seven different dark rituals that require one. But where are we going to get a record mm -hmm. player? Well, that's easy. I always keep one in my hood in case the vibes require it. Let's get our predict on. What? You set up a record player and start spinning the record backwards. It's not long before the eerie beat resolves into a guttural voice. Worship the Dark Lord Raven guttural. Feed him your patch when he grows strong. He will crack the bones of the world and drink their marrow. He will... Mm, no weather forecast. Maybe we skip forward a little. And their children will live a thousand fingers, and they shall be called tooth harvesters for the... Oh, I'm looking promising. Let's skip ahead again. Day's weather will be mostly sunny with light showers in the late afternoon. The high will be a scorching 89 degrees and the low will be... Okay, I really did not expect that to work. Does that have a weather forecast for every day on there? Today's weather forecast is the only one on this record. Tomorrow's weather will be on the B-side in Metallica's Master of Puppets EP. Anyway, you guys should really go back wow. and listen to the demonic stuff. There's some really good bits in there. No thanks, Haunted Iron Maiden record. I try to only worship obscure goddess cults. It's one of my many ways of fighting back against the patriarchy. As for me, I've already pledged my soul to the vibe. Job. Great job, kids! Not only did you predict the weather, but you avoided being suckered in by a demonic record spirit, which was probably actually a wily bear in disguise. This calls for a celebration! <laughs> a Two wily ones. bear! <laughs> for everyone, hooray! You're not sure where Coach got all that fun and smarts, but you're not complaining. You party down in style with Joy and Milo, and you'll grow a little closer. Come on. Josh! Hell yeah, dude. It's me! Um, alright, well, I still need, I need fun, so I guess I'll do the lake again. Cool. You head to the lake to get your tan on, but as soon as you get there, it starts to rain. Most of the beachgoers leave, but no, you will enjoy a fun lake day, damn it. You had a really rough morning, and you won't let anyone else stop you from getting fun. You aggressively splash in the lake and laugh as loudly as you can, hoping the clouds will give up on trying to ruin your day. Instead, the lake gets struck by lightning. When you wake up from the electrocution coma, you're on shore, the sun is shining, you have a cool new facial twitch. You win, you gain two fun. Nice. Later, you find Dahlia sitting with her legs crossed and her palms pressed together. Her pose reminds you of meditation, and it would be very calming if Dahlia wasn't screaming at the top of her lungs. You tap Dahlia on her. That is just in and out. You tap Dahlia on her extremely muscular shoulder and ask what's going on. Oh, hey, Josh, I was just getting in a screaming meditation <laughs> session. Someone with my raw power can't stop training, even for a single moment. Missing a train session is one of my biggest fears, but a true warrior has no fears, which is proof that I need even more training. Speaking of which, being at camp actually opens up some unique training opportunities. I saw this documentary the other day about a warrior who's able to harness the power of nature itself. The warrior stayed for years with the toads of Mount Myok... <laughs> And once the Toads learned to trust him, they taught him their special jutsu. This is Naruto, isn't it? <laughs> it's Naruto, yeah. Wow. And that's why I'm laughing. And all that nature train really paid off in the next documentary where the warrior defeated King Dragon in the Dark Tournament of Heroes. Now hold on. Wait a minute. But to be honest, Josh, I'm kind of struggling to harness nature's power. I gave by a single wise Toad. All Toads I found are idiots. <laughs> ah, this is so frustrating. I'm surrounded by nature right now, but I can't figure out how to harness it. Suddenly, Dario turns away from you and starts shouting in a nearby tree. Nature, show me your secret jutsu! I promise I'll only use your power when I really need it. Like when anyone ever challenges me for any reason, or just whenever I feel it. Giving Dario <laughs> the power of nature sounds kind of terrifying, but also kind of hot, like in a poison ivy tentacle vines kind of way. Help her do it. To gain the power of nature, you must first defeat nature. Devour a salad. To gain the power of nature, you must become one with nature. Become a salad. I, um, I'm <laughs> I... leaning more towards devour, but I'm, I'm, does anyone have a better idea? I would hmm. love to see become a salad, but I'm pretty sure that's not correct. <laughs> become a salad almost seems creative. Yeah. That also seems like fun. Perhaps. Uh, I, devour does that mean salad defeat is nature probably. makes me think boldness, doesn't yeah, it? Probably. I'm going to go with devour a salad. All right. Yeah. You tell Dahlia that Yay. eating a salad will literally mean that she'll be getting her power and energy from energy from nature itself. That plan makes perfect sense. It's exactly what I've been doing with arsenic for years. Every day I eat a little <laughs> bit of arsenic in the hopes of becoming huh. as powerful as arsenic. 
It didn't work exactly as planned, but I still have a super strong immunity to arsenic. That's not nothing. <laughs> and since nature and arsenic are basically the same thing, <laughs> if I eat a salad every day, I will be immune to nature. Oh, that's not what you meant. You tried to point out to Dahlia that nature and arsenic are slightly different things, but she's too busy eating arugula to listen to you. After a week of eating salads every day, Dahlia finds you. Admittedly, she looks great. Getting enough fiber is good for the skin. Josh, thanks to your idea, I've completed my training. Over the last three days, I've eaten five whole salads, including the salad bowls. Mm. Mm. By this point, I obviously must be immune to nature. And to test my new powers, I have thought up a series of nature immunity tests. <laughs> I'm going to start by hugging a beehive and then do some dental work on a wolf. And finally, I'm going to use an eel as a belt. You wince, terrified of Dahlia's nature test. She runs at a beehive, arms open wide for a bear hug. And it works. The bees happily hug Dahlia. Soon after, she's made a fashionable eel belt and perfectly removed the wisdom teeth of all the wolves in the forest. <laughs> Honestly, the animals are probably too afraid of all the arsenic in her bloodstream to attack her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm freaking immune to nature. With my new powers, all the plants and animals in the forest shall bend to my will and join in my army of demons. And also, I shall never get another mosquito bite. Hell yeah! Dahlia is so excited about her new nature powers that she decides to make a celebratory salad for you to display. She even included avocado, even though it's an extra 50 cents. You're touched by Dahlia's kind gesture, but as soon as you take a bite, you feel your throat begin to swell. <laughs> oh, Josh, I forgot to ask if you're allergic to arsenic. <laughs> Since I'm immune to it, I put a healthy dose in all my salad dressing. Even though your immune system is literally shutting down, the warmth of Dahlia's affection <laughs> fills your heart. You lose some control over your nervous system, but you gain two creativity and one boldness. Worth it. Today will be a Bisk. Of the day. I guess I'll go with Bisk. What's this? this one's uh, ch charm, right? Yeah. Charm. Yeah, another day at Camp Dome, and another day trying to survive a deadly battle royale game. You managed to murder ten people in twenty minutes. What a feat. The audience roars. This will certainly give you a lot of boldness. But wait, the Camp Dome shouldn't make you gain boldness, but charm. Even if it doesn't make sense, you want charm. You think quickly and make a fancy hat out of the guts of a corpse. The audience is wowed and grants you two charm. Much better. You're enjoying a romantic afternoon picnic with joy. You made sure that everything here was vegan, including the picnic basket and the blanket. Impressive. Gotta say, Bithk, this is pretty impressive. I didn't know you could weave a blanket out of tofu fibers, but... Wait, fuck, did it just start raining? Suddenly, inexplicable rain? Impossible! Al Roker promised it would be sunny today, but despite Al's prediction, a menacing storm rolls in. And a bolt of lightning strikes two feet oh. in front of you. It's pretty scary, oh, but the sexy, villainous, magical warlock -esque that steps out of the lightning is even scarier. Oh, hell yeah. Who's that? I don't I'll know. Do it. Okay. I I voice one character. Joy, my old flame, my most powerful nemesis. Just seeing you fills me with lust oh and blinding God. rage. Oh, it's, a, it's an evil ex's arc. Yep, it sure is. Oh God, it's Biff. Oh, this God. is Salome, my ex-girlfriend. Salome, what are you doing <sighs> here? We broke up ages ago, and I already defeated you in the season five finale. It's a lot. <sighs> That's all lube under the bridge. Hmm. I was shopping your bikini <laughs> pics on Insta yesterday, and I saw a post on Adorox's feet. You are hanging out with a bug-faced buffoon. Oh no, this is her, the exit. This is literally <laughs> fucking evil said. exes arc, yeah. Hell yeah, bro. I'm filled with horny jealousy. Joy, if you wanted to have crazy hot lubed up rebound sex with an ex-lover, why didn't you call me? We were electric together, honey. Holy shit, it's Play none of your business, but I was not having rebound sex with Axorax. As usual, you are completely blinded by your own thirstiness. Oh, well, if you're not in the mood for rebound sex, then we can have any kind of sex you want. Makeup, hate, break from doing your taxes, <laughs> anything you want, Wait. as long as it's sex. Wait, no. Listen, listen, Salome, I'll admit that we had a pretty insane sexual chemistry, but I called it off for a reason. It always gets way too messy too fast, and also, you're evil. Remember when you dressed up in that leather harness to distract me and your poisonous misspell killed like 180 pe people? Yeah, I gotta pass on this. What a disappointment. I didn't want to do this, but I have no choice to force you to use my secret weapon of seduction. Prepare yourself for... This foot massage coupon! Oh boy. <laughs> you gave me some romantic coupons on our anniversary. I've saved them all this time. Now I'm redeeming this coupon to completion. I cannot believe that I have to explain this to you, but romantic coupons are not legally valid, especially after a breakup. Duh. Super duper duh. Ridiculous. There's no expiration date on this coupon. I suppose I can be reasonable. I have a whole collection of coupons here. How about a trade-in? 
could have redeemed this gastric cleaning coupon from my doctor. Or this coupon for a free Brazilian wax. Or this coupon for one, one free sexual yogurt experience from the <laughs> yogurt lab. Yogurt? Uh, these coupons are definitely bullshit, but picking one is probably the fastest way to get Salome to leave us alone. Bithk, which po coupon should I pick? Help Joy vanquish her evil ex-girlfriend by choosing the least ho horny coupon. Fortune favors the bull. Choose the ask me any question I will answer truthfully coupon. Pick the right leg coupon. It's the last coupon we need to form the legendary Exodia coupon. <laughs> if you don't pick Exodia oh coupon, God. I'm going to piss myself. Yeah, but I want to Yeah, but I want to win, and most importantly, I want to beat Swissy. Yeah, Just, but it's also a Exodia. secret ending. Oh, right. Yeah, that's the thing. So if you do it all correctly, you're guaranteed to beat me. Yeah, I True, know. So that's fine. And fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. Uh, I'm just trying to go see the meteor shower with Dahlia. One second, I've got the guide for this. One second. Oh, you oh no, they made it. Oh, yeah. Are oh, you gonna fucking cheat? Oh, yes. I see. Yes, I, I see. see. <laughs> Fucking that's cheat against the dude who's not using the guy. That's cool. Hey, so Josh, I want you to know, uh -huh. the Exodia one is fun. Yeah, I've oh, got a no. fucking negative, negative one, one of that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, which is yes, that's what I did fault. to get the Dahlia Herald of the Seasons ended. Boca helped. So really, if you think about I, it, this is this Swissy's back. fault because I have a negative one in fun because of him. So. Damn it, Swissy. Okay. Whoa, seriously? The truth coupon is the most dangerous coupon in the whole bunch. Bithka, I didn't realize you were so, so bad. I'm surprised myself. I never thought your little friend would recommend something so bold. Are you sure that you don't want to choose the threesome coupon? No, I trust Bithk. I'll let you redeem the ask me any question and I'll answer truthfully coupon. Do your worst, Salome. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. this is too delicious. Well, do you really swear that you'll answer my question truthfully? I will get blue walls Yuck. if you lie to me. Yuck. Mm. Yuck. <laughs> yes, I will answer your mm. question truthfully. It's a witch's promise. Yes, yes, yes! The possibilities here are endless. Nothing is more sensual than an ex-lover admitting their still burning lust. Perhaps I could ask whispers or oh, no, which body part? Then I could inquire about the flavor of my ooh, or perhaps Araxis probiosis. What a Kylo Ren role play. The what? <laughs> I the, 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 excuse me. Joy, tell me, have you ever had another lover equal to my sexual prowess? Mm. Please answer in the form of a full length descriptive essay. <laughs> oh, goddess above. Gotta say, Bithk, you're a fucking genius. Soundly, I am not comfortable answering that question. You'll just have to keep wandering. No, you gave me your witch's promise, you beautiful light <laughs> Read the coupon! Rude, and also, I'm not a liar. You already asked me your question, remember? You asked Joy, do you really swear that I'll answer my question truthfully? And I answered. No. <laughs> I've been trapped into wasting my most powerful coupon. Damn it all the Protestant hell. <laughs> Why Mark not specifically? Words, Joy. Someday I shall seduce you and buff. You've made a very horny, very powerful enemy today. Salome disappears into another lightning strike, and the rain clears up. Thanks for helping me, Bithk. That was some impressive villain vanquishing. Should we get back to our romantic picnic now? Yes! You made Joy super happy. You also gained three smarts from an unrelated shenanigan that happens after your picnic. Nice. Thanks. Excellent. Nice. <laughs> Thanks, I guess. Josh, Boko, Bithk, Greg. Oh baby, mm. first going mm. into the campsite. Bada bing. I hope I don't interrupt any conversation. Bow bow bow. Oh hey, and I don't have to fuck anyone over. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Looking for a spot to chill by the campfire when you see two beautiful angels. Oh wait, that's just Dahlia and Mila or Milo. Ooh, Josh, come over here. I'm giving Dahlia a crash course in social media marketing, and we could use a note taker. Now, Dahlia, I've completed an audit of your social feeds, and frankly, I've noticed a lot of room for improvement. Metaphorically speaking, you're still in a digital cocoon, and I'm going to feed your metaphorical leaves until you form a metaphorical chrysalis and emerge a metaphorical butterfly of new media. Mile, you're one of my most trusted advisors, mainly because you remind me of an owl. People with <laughs> owl energy are very wise. But I just don't get it. 
What the hell? What does my hell Twitter feed have to do with my ultimate goal of conquering the eight circles of hell and declaring myself Queen Eternal? Talia, if you want to be a queen, that means your reputation is more important than ever. You have to project a compelling brand image to garner political clout. For example, you're using Twitter to stan Ariana Grande and follow Liam's insufferable feed, but you could also use Twitter to gain new followers for your army. I can use hell Twitter to gather followers? Awesome! I thought you could only do that by taking over territories with brutal crushing force. This seems way more efficient. Let's do this thing. Make me a media butterfly or whatever. Perf, I think it's time for a total brand refresh. How about we introduce you as a fitness influencer? You'll just have to promote protein powders two or three times an hour. <laughs> nice! And I can post my daily workout regimen, killing something bigger than me. I know I'm done when I'm holding <laughs> a skull in my hand. Um, that might be a little off-putting to some demographics. Remember, we want people to connect with your brand. Maybe we can introduce a relatable hobby. Do you crochet? Yeah! How do you know? I usually harvest the intestines of my defeated enemies to crochet nets, which used to trap more of my enemies. Now that's relatable hashtag content. Okay, yikes, on a few levels. Maybe we should just focus on the basics. How about a regular live stream schedule so your fans can get to know you? Oh, live streaming. I love live streaming my enemies. That's when you stream the life out of someone by slowly draining all their blood, right? This is so awesome, Milo. I can't wait to pin my block list to my wall for some live streaming. Not only are those two not on the same page, they're not even in the same book. And Dahlia's book is probably made of flesh. Time for a suggestion of your own. Dahlia's most mysterious and alluring trait is the silent H in her name. Start by planting silent H's here and there for no reason. People will be caught off guard. Uh, that bothers me. <laughs> Dahlia's brand is intense intensity. From now on, only tweet in all caps. People will love it. I think I, the obvious choice is... Is that the his choice is the bottom one, but the fuck, the 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 H upsets me greatly. Off guard. <laughs> All caps tweeting. Whoa, that's a genius idea. It's totally on brand for me because lowercase letters are a sign of weakness. It is. It's so not a genius idea. You two out of touch ruffians. All caps is childish. It accomplishes nothing. All caps is a sign of deep passion. It's inarguable. It's beautiful. It's powerful. It's the writing style of gods. <laughs> Name one single god who's ever used lowercase letters ever. You can't, because uppercase is the best. <laughs> At this point, you're just being irresponsible. I'm leaving before you corrupt all my remaining grammatical standards. They're frail enough as it is. Milo leaves and Dahlia starts immediately tweeting a bunch. Her feed is now all caps all the time. Okay, I just tweeted. Can't wait to pillage cities this weekend. Haha, <laughs> we'll pillage so hard the smell of death is everywhere. And here, what do you think of this draft? My favorite of part... My fave part of overthrowing kingdoms is killing anyone who doesn't join my demon army. Hashtag oops, hashtag lol. <laughs> lol. Well, I had no idea that tweeting could be so much fun. It's like I just put my thoughts out there the same way I hear them in my head. Dahlia's followers don't seem to mind her all cap style. It's almost like they follow Dahlia because she threatened to kill them or something. Yay! Ooh, Josh, check it out. Some egg account call just called me obnoxious. Joy calls me that all the time, so it must mean something good. Dahlia tweets, I like you, Josh, which admittedly sounds a lot better in all caps. Nice. Let's start a nice. Boko. Dated. Bear, ju egg accounts don't exist anymore. Maybe they do well, so yes, that's right. Now. You just Maybe. finished your quarterly Maybe. review. Maybe. It went awesome. Your boss thinks you're doing a great job playing this video game. You're hoping to celebrate your corporate Thanks, competency boss. with Impels, and good news, you find a Ravi and Calculester by the campfire. Hey. Josh. Oh, fuck. <laughs> That's me. Oh, Alright. <laughs> Calculuster just swears. Uh, no. <laughs> In conclusion, there are... Those are the 18,208 reasons I have collected to convince you that you should paint our food truck the statistically best color, burnt orange. This is so fun. Sounds glorious, Cal. Gods, this food truck is gonna be sick. Gonna reach level 18 in my merchant skill tree so fast! Guys, I just had the trillious. the what? The trillest food trillist. truck idea. We should sell mini Victoria sponge cakes for dessert. They were the Ooh. technical challenge recipe for the Great <gasps> British Bake Off Season Great 5 British finale. So off, they were! <laughs> <laughs> they were <though. laughs> I'm on season 6 right now! I appreciate that that was factually correct. <laughs> Whoa, Hex watches the Great British Bake Off? That's your favorite show. You give them the secret GBBO handshake that all true cakeheads know. 
Nice, it's sick that you like GBBO, Boko. I honestly love reality TV in general. I'm watching the best thing right now. Have you guys seen 90 Day Adoption? I have not seen it. I am aware that the show exists, but have been unable to watch it due to my current parental control browser settings. Oh. Aww. Yeah, I haven't seen it either. Reality TV bores the shit out of me. They always add out the really good violence. Holy shit, you guys aren't watching 90 Day Adoption? It's the ultimate reality show, and now I'm going to tell you all everything about it, and you can't stop me. So basically, the show is like The Bachelor, but for orphans. So each season, there's a new set of parents, and they adopt six orphans and choose which ones they want to keep. But the crazy oh, part no. is the parents have never met each other face to face. They fell in love and got married while only communicating through walkie-talkies. And if the parents don't compete enough intimacy challenges, they need to let their exes raise their children for a day. Needless to say, the drama is absolutely the best part. Mm, I am pleased that you are enjoying the show, but I am afraid I may be unable to watch it. I can only process a limited amount of drama per hour. I thought I was safe watching my favorite reality show, Terrace House, but then I had to process all the emotional nuance in the meat incident. Oh no. <laughs> I almost ran out of battery. Yeah, these shows are never worth the time to watch them. It's almost like one five minute clip of a headbutt, and that's all they replay over and over. Okay, you guys, I hear you, and I get this show isn't for everyone, but I haven't even told you about the elimination challenges yet. Just wait till you hear this. But they spelled here wrong. Oh dear, this is stressful. I may be overheating. Is my fan worrying louder than normal? Uh oh, looks like your two bonable friends aren't totally obsessed with reality TV. And that's a deal breaker for you. Quick, bring up a show you know the love. What about Undercover Final Boss? It's got brutal violence. There's tons of drama on the boss. <laughs> They're glowing red weak point. Have you guys seen the Turing Test? Are you human enough? It's a family friendly, drama free, and teaches you a lot about human social cues. Assuming the top, top one. That sounds awesome! I love any content related to final boss fights, final boss strategies, or even final boss flavor text. OMG, Ralph, it's so good you would love it. Honestly, it's so crazy you haven't seen it yet because it's like made for you. Let's watch it. You whip out your phone, briefly thank God that you kept your Disney Plus subscription, and pull up an episode of Undercover Final Boss. Welcome back to another episode of Undercover Final Boss. This time we'll be following the flaming lizard king Bowser as he goes undercover in the Koopa Kingdom. Holy shit, Bowser is on this show? Fuck, that's a huge get. I didn't realize we were talking A-list bosses here. I know! The cast on the show is literally bonkers. And look, the first thing they make do Bowser do is incur as a Goomba. Ah. Oh, oh dear. I'm not quite sure, but it seems that Grumpy Lizard is having trouble waddling as convincingly as those moving brown lumps. How stressful. Oh, and here's the part where they have Bowser talk to some of his most underpaid troops about their financial struggles. Struggles. So juicy. LOL. One employee shares with Bowser that he's working four jobs so he can take his daughter to Disneyland. Bowser finds this hilarious and openly laughs at his employee's poverty. <laughs> now you feel less bad about those the times you made Bowser fall into the pool of lava when playing Mario Bros. And now after a long day of empathizing with his employees, undercouple final boss Bowser is ready to tearfully admit his weak spot. It's his big soft belly. Mm. Damn, that show is so fucking good. Did you see how long they zoomed in on that weak spot? Talk about fan service. Yes, girl. I'm so glad you like it. And don't worry. There She's are aroused by weak spots. <laughs> there are 18 more seasons of this. What did you think, Calculester? Error. Error. Processing error. Overwhelming class inequality. Reset needed for emotional detection features. Calculester's oh, error hey, protocol ages. program kicks in, so he leaves to go find the nearest charging outlet. Hey, uh, wanna watch another episode? This show was your idea, and it turned out to be pretty fucking cool, so if, uh, if you want to... You binge watch the entire first season of Undercover Final Boss on your phone, and Aravi is cuddled up to you the whole time. You discover that Aravi's shampoo nice. smells like leather, and that Hex strongly emits the scent of string cheese. You're equally turned on from both smells. Nice. Mm. 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 Oh. I'd like mm. you not making these choices about me, game. You know, I know it doesn't yeah. matter for me, but fuck you. You're all geared up to invent a new kind of s'more. You're thinking jalapenos, maybe? When suddenly... Give it to me! <laughs> it's my turn! Damien, Hecate's third eye necklace is a powerful and dangerous magical artifact. You don't take turns with it. In fact, you don't touch it at all. But you've had it all day! 
Yes, because I got it when I defeated Larry the Lich's father after he mysteriously turned evil following his son's third untimely death at Spooky High. Now I'm keeping it safe. Hmm. I'm not understanding what you're not understanding. I think the part you're not understanding is that I want it! Ooh boy, you're never gonna pioneer the jalapeno s'more at this rate. Better take a side and score some jalapeno brownie points. <laughs> If you had Damien hold it, it'll probably just set it on fire and destroy it, but if it's such a dangerous artifact, this should save you a lot of trouble. Damien, leave Joy alone. I have an even cooler magical artifact. It's called Magic the Gathering. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Josh, this, this nice. game oh, shit. is just I gave, for nice. Damn it, I accidentally gave him points. Oh well, I don't care. Now look, Biff, normally Damien breaking something would be number one my most expected outcome in any given situation. But Hecate's third eye necklace is very much indestructible. I've tried my most powerful magic on it to no avail. In fact, a council of elders has been assembled to determine how to best destroy this re relic and wipe its scourge from the face of the earth. To break Hecate's third eye necklace, a great journey will have to be undertaken, entirely on foot with no air travel allowed, past countless obstacles and enemies, and... Hey, Joy, your shitty relic is totally weak. I had it for like two seconds and it just fell apart. It what now? <laughs> yeah, you were just talking for a really long time, so I got bored and I took the necklace and just kind of started fucking around with it. And the next thing I knew, it was in seven pieces. Seven? We hadn't even been able to break it in two. <laughs> then I got mad at it for being such a shitty relic, and... Okay, long story short, do you want these ashes to remember it by, or should I just burn the ashes? And then burn the ashes of the ashes. One moment, please. I have a council of elders to address. Man, I hope this doesn't mean Joy won't let me fuck with cooler, better, less breakable artifacts in the future. Stupid weak ass Hecate, uh, Hec Hec I guess. Right? Hecate. 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 Third eye Hecate. necklace. Hecate is so the, the Council Greek of goddess of magic. Is, so the Hecate. Council of Elders is frankly shook. They never saw seen a dangerous magical artifact so quickly and efficiently destroyed. So, where does that put me? Damien, how would you like to have a turn with some more artifacts? Damon's eyes light up with glee, and he cries the battle cry of someone about to fuck a bunch of shit up. For once with someone else's permission. <laughs> Greg. <laughs> Mothman. Greg. Mothman. Hey there, Greg. I have just heard the most interesting gossip. Would you like to hear it? <laughs> you can take it or leave it. You're really just here to relax by the fire. I'll accept your silence as a yes. You'll never believe what I just heard. Our fellow camp rate, Aravi Mishra, seemingly innocent and endearing, actually moonlights as a monster slayer. She slaughters monsters through the night, just for fun. What do you think of that? You think no shit? Oh, you think you can do better? <laughs> Why don't you tell me what gossip you've learned in the last 24 hours if you're so good at it? Please. Gladly. Yeah, you figured this was all bet a bit to get Moss to get you tell you some gossip. Luckily, you're not going to disappoint. Me, I assume. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but you might give me stats. Molecular, moist, yeah, okay. moist, okay. moist, moist, moist has got to be. A hamster who's a trained yeah. assassin, an origami knife, the power of God, and anime, the common cold. On your side, yep. Uh, the common cold. Okay. Type something bigger than a seagull. <laughs> what? My Snail. dick. <laughs> nice. Oh. I'm, I'm kidding. Seagull. I'm kidding. Obviously not. Uh, well, hang on. <laughs> All right. Now that That's I already typed. Go. We gotta go. We're now already I, we're we're already it. way over time. Now that I now that I've said it like this, holy smokes! I never would have believed it. This blows my Aravi Slayer revelation out of the water. I can't wait to tell everyone about this insane double lives people in Camp Spooky appear to be living. <laughs> like tossing a breadcrumb to a flock of ravenous pigeons, your friends immediately devour and circulate your rumor. Holy shit, did you hear that Bithk was in a gang? Yeah, I'm serious, the gang was allegedly super wimpy and they called themselves the Moist Crocodiles. I heard that Bithk met with the leader, <laughs> Moist Mike the Wear Crocodile, in a seedy dive bar on the outskirts of town. <laughs> Bith saw Moist Mike's gang tattoo of a seagull eating my eating of my dick and started asking Mike all about the gang. Moist Mike wasn't just gonna let Bith dick. join on the spot, however. <laughs> There were apparently some pretty rigorous challenges to overcome for it. Biff had to befriend a cop, donate two gallons of blood, and even run a red light. But none of that stuff compared to the final challenge. Biff had to fight Moist Mike himself using only the common cold. Biff won the battle, and they were in the gang for a long time, almost two whole weeks. They eventually left, though, because they realized that they were too lame for that crowd. But if you ever see Biff Seagull tattoo, you know what it's for. Weird, huh? Oh, my boldness. Get fucked. Bring out your flasks. We were waiting all, right. all week for this moment, visiting Quan and getting a good drink. Well, look what the cat dragged in. I have some drinks here for you. It's up to you which one to drink. Let's see what's behind door number one. Josh, it's the Royale. 
No idea if I got it. You want to try it? Otherwise, you have the mystery Royale, box. It's not on the list. It's what? Not, not on, on the list. list. Well, let's find out what it does then. Yeah, no, totally. I was testing your common sense to drink. The lo fi. No, sorry, co fi. I, beats... don't, I don't know what list you have, Boko, but I have a list that has all of them. That one's uh, something for sure. <laughs> the Royal. No idea one? if I got the recipe yeah. right. Want to try it? Is nope. it go go oh. something good or something bad? Uh, well, choose two other players, chosen players, swap all stats. Hmm. Oh, yes, that one, yeah. Hmm. Anyway, so it needs uh, to one relax and study, too. Otherwise, you always have the mystery box. You want to take it? This one just changed the music. So, yes or no? <laughs> uh, yeah. no. Go. No, yes. no, box. No. Uh, Bloody Mary. Five beats. Hope you're happy with it. No refunds. Protein shake. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Oh, fuck. That one's bad. Not bad. the protein shake, but the Bloody Mary. That one's bad. Yeah, but it's not as bad as listening to the lo-fi. Wow. <laughs> disagree. Lo-fi is good. Oh, no. Not the protein shake. What does it do? Box. Uh, do you want me to tell you? Yes, I do. Yes. Randomly swaps all stats. Nope. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> nope. Sangria. Oh, really? Hmm. Oh, it's got a heart in there. Hmm. It's a bold of you. Hope you're happy with it. No refunds. Love potion number nine. Nice. <laughs> number Love nine. Love potion number nine. Love uh, potion. yes, I will absolutely take that. What's that do? I guess I'm hard with whoever I'm trying to romance. Yeah. Which I have not gotten so far, so... Alright, love potion number nine. Ah, I love the love potion number nine. The right way to get someone to like you is by being yourself and finding someone with whom you can match. But the fast way is by drinking this drink. I like straws. <laughs> I like okay. straws. Sangria. Ah, the delicious sangria. Mediterranean concoction with a lot of heart. My calculations are correct. I should imbue with you with this je de vive of the charm of Mediterranean people. Oh, nice. I needed that, I think. The Royale. Ah, the Royale. This gives you true royal presence. You'll be so commanding that you could even make two people exchange their stats. Well. Oh, no. All right, like everybody. Well. Swissy. Uh, why can't that one have I'm not player? cashing in, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to swap stats, I would, everybody? but I'm not going to win anyway, so it's like, you know, it wouldn't be worth it. Boca's really the only one with anything uh, to lose here because, like, she's got, like, No, I'm gonna lose everything. anyway because the other one just makes me lose the game. That's literally oh. all it does. Oh, really? <laughs> you can't win. It puts all your stats at negative. Oh. Oh, uh, it's a shame you didn't drink that one first. It's not all your stats. It, it uh, makes the locations decrease stats instead of giving. What? So our that's stats not what are pretty it much says. set now. Well, Location on stats the are negative Wiki instead of positive. List. Okay, I thought that was just negative. switching all mine to negative. Uh, just, no. just switch Swissy and Bix. Alright. Well, that's can, not as bad as I thought it was. You can take my now. negative one, idiot. What oh, are you doing? Yeah. Drinking a Bloody Mary? That's a curse! Who drinks curses? Just because I keep my curses in glasses and cups doesn't mean you should drink them. When anyone visits a location, they will lose stats. Though. Have fun with that. Bloody so Mary to believe is you a drink drink Good luck, though. I guess. So I guess that means our stats are never gonna get higher. Nope. <laughs> Fifth. So well, except uh, for in the... That's oh, sad. come on. Ah, oh, come on! Fuck you, Greg. Fuck you. Alright, so everything is going to lose stats now. Oh, and my double went away. Well, at least well, it's not it's a double. Stat that you don't thing. care about, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess. Yeah, I don't. I don't give a shit about boldness. I don't think. Well, hmm. yeah, fun is probably. Oh, do you? Just give her fun. That day, you bring a magazine to read by the lake. The cover story is how to gain fun while camping with your six hottest, most charismatic friends. Step one: go to the lake. Step two: wait. Wait, what's that's it? Why hasn't that worked for you yet? Oh wait, you just gained negative two fun. Thanks, Cosmopolitan. <laughs> you break off from the group a little Thanks, early to attend a CPR class at the lifeguard check. You never miss a CPR class because you're a creep. Lucky for you too, your smoking hot campmates are already there when you arrive. Damien doesn't seem happy about it though. Lame. What the hell is this, Joy? You said you'd teach me water magic today. No, I didn't. You said it with that stupid sock puppet you made of me while doing a frankly offensive impression of my voice. <laughs> Damn. 
That always works on Scott, but come on, <laughs> why are we at the stupid class? Because saving lives is true magic, Damien. Wait, like actual magic? If I say yes, will you shut up and take the class? For sure. Then yes, we are learning actual magic. Fuck yeah! I'm gonna use it to kill people! What's up, class? Welcome to our super chill CPR class. I'm Wanda, this is Stu. We know your names. We've been going to school together for years. Oh, Theo, that's a relief. I was like 90% sure those were our names, but you can never be too sure, you know. Is he even still here? I have no idea. Oh. Anyway, oh, there we go. hope you dudes are ready to kick back, throw on some tunes, and remind us how to do CPR because we totally freak out. Wait, you want us to teach you CPR? But you're the teachers. Look, we don't really believe in rigid hierarchies, okay? Student, teacher, what's the difference? I mean, we definitely remember some of how to do CPR. We just don't remember what the first step is like at all. What? This is bullshit. I'm never going to learn magic at this rate. And you're never going to get to the part where you put your lips on other people's lips. Come on, say something. What's the first step of performing proper <laughs> CPR? Before performing CPR, always check your mouth to make sure it's not busy eating some delicious pasta. <laughs> Just remember the acronym yeah. CPR. Cry, pray, recruit yeah. someone. Ac <laughs> Just remember the acronym CPR. Cry, pray, recruit someone who actually knows CPR. Hmm. Do any of you know CPR? That, that, that sounds like, like smart. The know, bottom one sounds like steps. I've never been trained. That one sounds I like creativity to me. The top one could be like fun. My CPR certification is expired. I'll do this. It was char. Delicious Fuck pasta. yeah. Yeah, I figured it was charm because it was other Oh, people is that me. what CPR stands for? It is not. CPR stands for cardiopulmonary respiration. <laughs> nice try, dude. But that would just be CR. <laughs> That's not enough letters for a serious medical abbreviation. What about IV? The number four in Roman numerals? We don't have time for math, Joy. Lives are at stake. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I can't believe Bit remembered what the acronym stands for before we did. I totally thought it was something like something else. Me too. I was gonna say cat piss rinse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would wake a person up. Honestly, I was thinking it was the Communist Party of Russia. Do uh, you think maybe we shouldn't have tried to learn CPR from that stack of Cold War era leaflets? Well, they were they had such cool slogans. Anyways, we still need somebody who actually knows CPR for the third step. Leave this to the pros. I'll do it. I've only sort of been paying attention, but I'm pretty sure CPR stands for Cock Punch Rampage, so I'm ready. Oh no. <laughs> no, I don't think it does. Cause that would be CR2, you know? And man. If only someone here was the kind of monster who goes to CPR classes all the time as a sly excuse to touch other people's mouths, I bet they'd know. You clear your throat. Did someone say touch other people's mouths? <laughs> of course, after all, Bifk is the only one of us who actually knows what CPR stands for. They must be an expert. Like this is an absolute festival of dumbassery. I'm surprised the whole camp hasn't drowned by now. <laughs> Festival of Dumbassery is pretty solid. Mm. Little does Joy know, you've hornily attended so many CPR classes that you could do it in your sleep. Sometimes you do. It's a problem. You romantically dip the CPR <laughs> dummy, press your lips to it, and show everyone how it's dumb. Wow, you uh actually know how to do CPR. And so passionately. You passionately teach everyone proper CPR. Damien thinks he knows magic now, Joy's anxiety is quelled, and you gain two boldness and one charm. So yeah, you just can't get, you just min minus the actual stat, but if you do the event right, you still get your plus stats. So, Got Josh, it. where would you like to lose? Uh, let's let's just lose, uh, charm do I is... lose charm or smart? <laughs> charm I'm gonna lose yellow. smarts. All right. That day you get lost in the woods. You decide to study the tree's bark and moss patterns to solve the situation. By reading one tree's bark, you realize which direction north is. By reading another tree's bark, you learn the exact age of the tree, 73 years old. By reading yet another tree's bark, you learn the tree likes Irish poetry and believes Buffy and Spike were the ultimate ship on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. 
Whoa, so much useless knowledge. You gain minus two smarts. <laughs> 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 you meet up with Dolly and help her work on her Befriend a Forest Plant badge. Milo tags along because the woods are looking particularly photogenic today. Ah, uh, here we are. A plant truly worthy of my friendship. It's bright, it bold, it's bold, it knows how to defend itself. It is, in all ways, my kind of plant. Dolly has apparently decided to make friends with a patch of poison oak. Milo, get a picture of me putting a friendship bracelet on this plant. I'd take a selfie, but I broke my phone getting my throw your phone so hard it breaks badge. With pleasure, darling. Go on and get in real close. Give the plant a hug. Don't worry about the rash you'll probably get. Life's little chemical burns only bring us closer. Alright, I'm ready. Snap that photo. Milo? My phone, it's... it's dead. Uh, oh no. Oh no. Dead? Who killed it? I did. Through my own thoughtless actions. Oh, why did I have to live stream our entire walk through the woods? Ah, that's right, because every moment of my existence is worthy of careful documentation. But now, but now I can't document any of it. If an influencer walks through the forest but none of their followers are around to see it, does the influencer even exist? You suggest a quick trip back to Champ to charge everyone's phones. Yours is dead, too, because you can't stop Googling butts. <laughs> you want me to walk back to camp with a dead phone? What if we see a good bird? Or I have a keen insight about life? What if we have a good time and I can't share it with my fans? And I'm not leaving the spot to tell you a picture of this plant. A friendship like this doesn't come every day, you know. Come on, Josh, do something. I'm starting to get itchy from how much I want this badge. Everyone has wondered at some point what they do if their phone ran out of batteries in the woods. Luckily, you've got the perfect plan. Disguise your phones as sexy cows so Zeus, god of thunder, comes down and has sex with them. Inspire your phones to hmm. keep going with a motivational speech. So the second one's probably charm, right? The top one's fun? Could be. Makes sense to me. I'll go with the sexy cow. Alright. It was creativity. Oh, right, it worked out anyways. Yeah. I, mean, I don't do see any problems with that plan. Except, where are we going to get a sexy cow costume? Oh, don't worry about that. A startup called Milky Couture sent me one of theirs to try out on my channel. It's not really on brand <laughs> for me, but it's perfect for this. Milo's sexy cow costume fits your phones perfectly, partially due to creative use of spandex, and partially because fashion industry sizing standards are criminal. Wow, their marketing copy was right. Milky Couture really does combine all the anatomical accuracy of a cow with the sex appeal of not a cow. Suddenly, lightning mm. strikes a nearby tree. Out of the smoking crater steps Zeus, <laughs> god of thunder. He's wearing his traditional garb, ADA <laughs> aviator sunglasses, toga with popped collar, designer shower oh, sandals. Hell yeah. Whoa, he says taking a sip from his red solo cup. That cow's so hot it's practically <laughs> a hamburger. How's about I turn myself into a cow and we... Wait a second. Mm. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm not... The bro voices are killing me. Last time I fucked a cow, it became this whole thing about how I'm a predatory bully with no understanding of affirmative consent. Ever since hashtag me too, I've been having way more cautious about turning into animals and having sex with mortals. The climate has really changed. Sorry, hot kilf, but as a father of lots of daughters, I feel a great responsibility <laughs> to not get called out for my retrograde morals. Wait, stop! It's not really a cow, we promise. Ha! I knew it, shouts Zeus. I'm being catfished! No, no, no. This is just Milo and Josh's phones inside a sexy cow costume. We were trying to trick you into charging them. With my big dick energy, Zeus grins? Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? I'll totally fuck your phones, no problem! <laughs> the king of the gods gets busy banging the shit out of both of your phones. Uh. It looks like he does this a lot. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm really glad I went this way. I'm really glad I went to the woods. Oh, when fuck. it's all over and Zeus has made his excuses and vanished, you're left with two fully charged phones and a greater appreciation of what a headphone jack can be used for. Oh, <laughs> no. one and smarts. <laughs> <laughs> that is not where I was expecting that to go, but I'm so glad it did. Okay. Where would you, what see. stat would you what like to lose? <laughs> I would like to lose. Smart? 
No. Or do you like to lose? Well, by all means. You've got, you've got creativity. Creativity it is. Creativity. That day in Monster Scouts, you all, I'm crying. You practice writing the speeches in preparation I for possibly him. being killed by a bear. You won't get your, you want to get your last words right. You decide to write a heartfelt poem dedicated to your favorite things in life. Monster Camp, the smell of rain, the bittersweet joy of watching the sunset for the very last time, and chicken tenders. Everyone is moved by your poem. You're pretty sure you even make nearby bears Ten cry. You gain, champ. you minus two creativity. Oh my god. Alright. You find a Ravi and the two of you walk around the HQ building, opening every single drawer in case there are useful items inside. All seems well mm. until... Bear attack! Bear attack! I'm a bear and I'm attacking! Ah. Is this bear like a... Is, is she on a route right now or is this just a bit? Is this just a thing he I think does? this is just a bit I think this is does. just a thing he does. The chilling cry of the dead attack bear. A beast as rich and cunning as it is in XP. Stand back. I'll handle this. While I'm pleasantly surprised by your commitment to bear safety, Ravi, I just want to make sure. You know I'm not an actual bear, right? Just your old pal coach dressed in a bear suit in order to increase bear awareness? Look at her face. Uh, Ravi, why are you standing there frozen, staring off in the middle distance? Is this some new millennial dance I'm unaware of? Oh god, I've seen this before. She's menuing. What? She's navigating her attack menu in order to select the perfect move with which to defeat you. What attack menu? The one in her head, I guess. Although I'm in her head and I don't see any attack menus, I always just tell her to choose something randomly and get it over with. Uh, you don't get it, you dumb curse. Monster hunters are weak against bears because bears are technically beasts, not monsters. I've got to choose a perfect attack to counter my type disadvantage. Otherwise, the concept might go suboptimally. Gasp. Oh, no. Well, in a real bear attack, you can't expect the bear to wait around while you select the perfect attack, so neither will I. Roar and stuff. Coach charges towards Robbie. Quick, help her break out of her decision paralysis before she falls victim to this fake bear attack. Repeal the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution, removing the right to bear arms. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing stronger than a bear is it. 27 bears. <laughs> oh, no. Hmm. I mean, that's true. We're going to repeal the Second Amendment. All right. <laughs> that's probably cool smart. Thing, so that's, smart yep. that's it. I cast public backlash. Our obvious public backlash attack was super effective against the United States Constitution. The Second Amendment was defeated, skipping decades of counter lobbying and incremental legislation. Ravi gains 1776 experience. Nice. Two burly men in cheap black nice. suits appear to confiscate Coach's arms. No, no, I'm not really a bear. I'm a high school coach with a passion for bear safety. You'll have to file a petition then. Good luck filing it without arms. They warned me that one day the government would come to take my arms away, but I never believed them, and now it's too late. Even so, Ravi, I'm very proud of you for caring so much about protecting yourself and your campmates from bear attacks. It's like I always say, a bear in the hand is worse than two in the bush, but only because the bear in your hand is closer. Two bears are also bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to keep that in mind the next time I try to figure out how dangerous a bear is. The burly men in suits drag Coach's we... arms away. Coach's arms are attached to Coach, so he's dragged away as well. Today is a great day for bear safety. You gain two charm and one creativity. Greg! Which ah! stat would you like to lose? Uh, boldness. Alright. That day you venture into the haunted manor. Everything is going fine and you're reassured on how brave you are. When suddenly a ghost, or is it just someone wearing a blanket with two holes, so hard to tell the difference, appears and whispers in your ear. Remember one day you will be in a long game and no one will remember you. Oh, no, you will be long gone and no one will remember you. All the struggle you endure to become a better version of yourself, both personally and professionally, will eventually mean nothing. The ghost leaves while you take all that in, gaining two boldness in the pro minus two boldness in the process. Shortly after, you're helping Joy and Milo exercise an evil spirit from the haunted manor. Okay, Milo, Greg, I need your help making sure this binding circle doesn't break. Otherwise, this spirit could escape and terrorize humanity forever. Yes, of course, darling, and we'd never let that happen. If the haunted manor becomes possessed by a malevolent spirit, horrible things would happen. For example, I can't post <clears> that <throat> lovely selfie I took by the entrance with the caption half Chag blessed. It would be in such poor taste. It's nice to have such selfless friends. However, just as Joy is starting to say the dread summoning chant, you're interrupted by a ringing doorbell. Oh my god. It's the uh, fucking- I've got a lot of early pizza for you three or before, I guess. Three and a half? What's, what's with the dude in the middle of the pit, pit of ground? A pizza? I never ordered a pizza. I hate delivery food with a passion. That's not 
vegan. Yeah, it's definitely not for me either. Vegans don't eat pepperoni pizza. Also, we're in the middle of something very important, and if you ruin my concentration, you... That is, this pizza is for you. I got the new trust right here, so it says, who is a mysterious dilapidated haunted manor in the heart of the woods. How on earth did you find this place with such vague instructions? Where's my tip? I search for our money because I am motivated by one thing and one thing only. Tip money, which I'll be needing you to give me before I can leave. But it's not our pizza. Be gone, darling, before I leave an incredibly scathing Yelp review. You ah. can do, can't go back to work without money for the pizza. Stuck here with me until one of you ponies is up. Oh, fuck. No wonder your friends accuse you of being annoying when you're freeze to leave them alone. This sucks. This girl won't leave anytime soon, and her presence is fucking with Joy's concentration on the exorcism. How can you convince her that this is definitely not your pizza? Check the pizza's Facebook profile. The true owner of this pizza will surely be one of its contacts there. The pizza doesn't belong to us. Mm -hmm. It belongs to Earth. It came from the Earth. It should go back to it. What? <laughs> hmm. Both good. Inhale. Are you gonna check the pizza's Facebook, or are you gonna say the pizza should go in the dirt? Make a dirt pizza. Dirtza? A dirt the dirt pizza. The pizza. The pizza. 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 Pick, Greg. Oh, this is me. I'm Pick, Greg. Greg. Greg it's I'm thinking! I didn't realize it was me! Uh, Good job, let's see. Greg. I'm good in smarts now. Uh, I think the top one's smart, so I'm gonna go with it. Oh, that's just ridiculous. It's a pizza, Greg. There's no way it has hey. a... <clears throat> Please, darling. Everyone has a Facebook profile left over from 2012, even if they don't want to admit it. Here's the pizzas. Oh, this is actually quite interesting. It appears that the pizza's likes include tailgating and going to children's birthday parties. It also interested in feminism, Italian cinema, and is in a polyamorous relationship with a box of garlic knots. <gasps> what? No way. Oh my goddess, it even has a photo album of its cruise from Sicily to New York. Wait, read its most recent post. Today I have achieved my dream. Someone finally purchased me for consumption. I can't wait to meet the one who's going to eat me. This is my life's purpose, to appease someone with my delicious cheesy goodness. Yeah, we for me, friends. I have lived a full life and have no regrets. A word into the great beyond. That's actually kind of heartwarming. Okay. Also, the pizza's order was tagged in the post. Apparently, he's an in itinerant hobgoblin who loves haunted houses, delivery pizza, and competitive knitting. You know, I often find that we forget everyone and everything has much more to them if you take the time to learn about them. We should all take time to learn about each other and consider that every person and pizza is living a rich inner life, one that we must cherish, and... Before Milo can finish, you all hear a toilet flush and the hobgoblin you've never seen before walks out of the bathroom and sees you all talking. Oh, cool, he says. My pizza's here. Here's your money. Keep the change. Okay, bye. Sick. Bye. The hobgoblin opens the pizza box and eats the whole thing in just a few bites. He nods at you all and walks off, presumably to continue his knitting practice. Ugh. Um, well, okay then. This moment feels less beautiful now. Well, life is like that, isn't it? One man's soul-touching moment is another man's lunch. Or something. I don't know. I'm uninterested now that there's nothing heartwarming happening. Let's just finish this exorcism. And you do. You were all briefly touched by the pizza's purpose, but now that that cheesy shit is over, you can get back to bonking your friend. Nope. Boinking your friends and earning two fun and ch one charm. You know. Bonk. <laughs> Boink. Bonk. Great places. Random. Greg. Yes! Finally! Fourth. Swasty. <laughs> what? What is there to choose? You're gonna lose something. It's fine. You can finally lose whatever stat it. you want. <laughs> Finally! Uh, shit. Yeah, you didn't think that through, did you? Well, it's not like I had a sway in it either way, but it is my humor. You got excited uh, for nothing. Fine. You fool. <laughs> I mean, I'm just gonna lose more fun, aren't I? I guess so. <laughs> You're in the lake sunbathing. It's kind of relaxing, but oh. hella boring. Ouch. Oh. What's the issue? You lost your ability to have some fun unless you're playing video games or partying in wild raves? Ah, no, you see the problem now. You didn't put on sunscreen, but fun screen, which has a fun protection factor of 50. You wash the fun screen away with some water and put on some sunscreen. There you go, you present some sunburn and gain minus two fun. <laughs> Later, you're helping Joy test some of her latest potions. You down a mysterious vial of green bubbling elixir and wait to feel its effect. Did it work, Greg? Do you feel any less horny? 
Joy leans in super close, no. checking your fuels for delation. You shake your head. The potion didn't work. You're still super horny. Either that or you're just in love with Joy. Eh, whatever. That potion is only effective about 40% of the time. Plus, I think I might actually miss your rampant horniness if you were cured. I guess you're growing on me. Oh, by the way, you should come to my show tonight. Remember my screamo van, Ventagram? What? I'm the lead singer. Damien and Dahlia are a backup. Well, we've got a gig. We're playing that shit That church. sounds amazing. <laughs> shit church! <laughs> We're playing a shit, shit church. church. You know that super shitty bar that they built in an abandoned church? A lot of people confuse shit church and the other nearby church slash bar ass chapel. <laughs> but shit church is way more gross. And the drinks are half price after two. Or after 11. I just read that as a Roman numeral. You should come tonight. Wow. Although one of those potions I gave you has a rare side effect that makes you turn into a literal bull. So if you're busy, I get it. Holy shit, Joy's just invited you to your show. That's basically a date. This is a chance to show how serious you are about having sex with her by being Ventagram's number one fan. Ventagram is pretty popular, though. Chances are there'll be tons of horny fans at the show. You'll have to distinguish yourself from the crowd to get Joy to notice you. That night, you show up to shit church. It's fucking terrifying. The whole bar is filled with ghosts, screamo <laughs> fans, and Catholic priests. You can't tell if everyone's speaking in tongues or if they're just really drunk. And there's no bathrooms, just wormholes into hell that people are pissing directly into. Yep, this bar is definitely the most <laughs> terrifying single location you've ever been in. It's the perfect place for a screamo show. And look, there's Ventagram. Mm, looks like you showed up, Greg. I'm happy that you're here and that I didn't accidentally turn you into Greg. a bull. You would have been a cute bull, though. Fucking metal. Greg! Guard <laughs> your eyes because Ventagram is about to <laughs> rip them out with sound! Ventagram shreds! Indeed! We're gonna wage war on your body with sound. Come on, Damien. Let's beat the shit out of each other to warm up. Thanks for coming, Greg. Yeah! We're about to go on, so I should change into my outfit. If you're an extra enthusiastic fan, you can help me take it off after the show. God, you're in nice. love with this hot feminist witch. And Ventagram's about to start. What's your strategy for being the most awesome fan of all time? Any fan can clap and cheer. You'll celebrate Ventagram's greatness by performing a blood pagan ritual in their honor. <laughs> An average fan would wear a t-shirt with the band's name on it, but you're no average fan. You'll wear a t-shirt with the band's members' social security numbers. Oh, no! <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, fuck, dude. Well? Uh, well? Well? I mean, smart's my highest stat, and I almost want to say the bottom is smart, but... It feels like it's more... I, mean, I have no idea. I don't know what a blood pagan ritual would be. Creative, I guess? Perhaps, yeah, creative, probably, maybe bold. I mean, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Is the bottom... what? <laughs> I don't know what they would be. I don't know. Yeah, nothing on this one. Uh... Uh, crime would be social security numbers, probably. Fun? Uh... So my bottom one might Blood be fun, I guess. Ritual seems like Which is at a negative one. Correct. Because you have my stats now, idiot. Fun. Because it's, because it's a crime. Yeah, because that's the stats that are sticking numbers, out. It's a crime, therefore it's... I thought crime, crime was bold. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, bold's also one of my lowest, so if it's either fun or bold... I would just do the top one. But yeah, let's go with the top. It's not my fault. Not so work. bold. You know exactly <laughs> what to do. A pagan sacrifice ritual. It'll ensure that this gig goes well and prove you're the greatest fan ever. Just one problem. Who should you sacrifice? You see a I little bet elder... the bottom was fucking smart. You see a little elderly nun standing in the corner of the bar. You approach and ask her who she would sacrifice in a bloody pagan ritual. Or creative. Mm, what a conundrum. I suppose you could sacrifice me, dearie. Usually I stay here to bake cookies for all the nice young people that do their music concerts here. And I'm the only one sober enough to call an ambulance when someone gets stabbed. But if you're truly in need, please go right ahead and sacrifice my life. Score! This dumb nun is ready to die. Just to, what, be nice? Help you score a date? What a moron! You start preparing the ritual right away. <laughs> a little later, the lights go down. A spotlight illuminates Joy in the middle of the stage. She looks confident, powerful, and hot. Apparently, being in a band is sexy. Who knew? This is hey, shitheads! We are Ventagram! We're here to fuck you up and eat men's organs and... Wait, what the fuck? Who drew a pagan sacrifice circle in the middle of the dance floor? Joy looks down and sees the massive pentagram that you drew on the floor. You've tied the elderly nun to the center of it. Her life force is being drained slowly and painfully. Huh? What the fuck? Is that supposed to be a pentagram? Did some kind of drunk child draw this? <laughs> it's taking up the whole mosh zone! Plus, it's totally noob shit to sacrifice a nun. It's just a fucking cliche at this point. Yeah, and killing a person at all is completely uncalled for. No one asked for this, Greg. What's wrong with you? 
Oh shit, yeah, you've been interrupting the show and the crowd is turning on you. You try to explain the story with the sacrifice rituals of the show, the Ventagram's gig goes well, but the elderly nun screaming really drowns you out. God, she's shrieking a lot. What an annoying <laughs> nun. Ah, sorry, dearies. I don't mean to interrupt your wonderful music concert with my shouts. It's just the pain is excruciating. Ah! <laughs> Greg, this is a classic toxic fandom. No one asked for you to do this, and now you're just using our music as a flimsy excuse to do horrible shit. Get the fuck out of this bar right fucking now. You are the first person in history to ever get kicked out of shit church. Wow, you must have a really bad personality. Oh. Joy hates you, and since you killed that innocent nun, now God hates you. God curses you as punishment for your sins, which makes you lose three charm. Leave it to me. Oof. Boko. Anyway, I was I Anyway, I'd like to. Yeah, it feels like charmed. it feels like very the lose cool. the lose states in this one are much more like mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like fuck you, you suck, and you're like I just thought it was smart. <laughs> anyway, it's lose uh, charm. I really thought because they're talking about the bomb being crimes, which is bold. Yeah. Well, yeah, but it was like social security numbers and shit, which is smart. Yeah. I guess. Today you're playing the most dangerous camp dome game of all, Charm Wars. The rules are simple. You gain charm by the end of the round or you will die instantly. Boka, you better earn some charm quick. Well, like in the next 10 uh, uh, seconds, well, you're gonna fucking die. Oh, you earn some charm already. Well, okay, thank God. You just earned minus two charm. Woo, that was way too close. Wait. <laughs> Don't oh, think about it. I earned negative charm, which means I still got some. It's just inverse. You it's, did that. Your charm accelerated. I gained five negative dollars. Your charm, your charm yeah. accelerated, because negative acceleration is still acceleration. A thing I still remember from fourth grade because I got it wrong on a test once. <laughs> it's true. Wow. You're so smart. Well, That's there's bad. no such thing as deceleration. It's yeah, a lie. It's, it's negative acceleration. You're accelerating in the opposite direction. Yep. It was a trick. Stupid trick. Of roots. You spent the last few hours leaving behind your normal youthful love adventures for some literal adventures with Ravi. You reached level 69 of a local mine, fought your nice. way through countless nice. insignificant and poorly animated mini bosses, and finally facing the big boss, Dungeon Jesus. <laughs> Watch out! If you finish a cast in Water to Wine, 80% of your body will be made of yellowtail cavernet. <laughs> you don't tell her that that's the typical Friday night for you, and instead use your slingshot of poor taste too to send three bolts of piercing straight into Dungeon Jesus. You did it! You really did it! He's defeated forever! Possibly for just three days. Either way, looks like there are some kick-ass sandals in the loop bag he drops. Ravi hits you with a crisp low five, after which your hands seem to linger for just a fraction of a second too long. Ravi blushes. Suddenly, a pleasant chime noise fills the air, and glowing text appears above both of your heads. You look up to see glowing text above you. What's that symbol mean? What's happening? Level up, loser. Check it out. Get enough XP that it's time to level up our relationship. <gasps> oh my god. Looks like... Between this is just like per Jesus Persona. And the erotic hand touching. We will advance from enemies to friends all the way to will they, won't they? <gasps> even <more? laughs> and even better, now you get to unlock a new skill from your late relationship skill sheet. Which one are you gonna pick? Oh man, choosing new skills is critical for a successful endgame in this game. Of love, obviously, not the actual video game. That would be ridiculous. It's no different. Time to pick a skill that is sure to impress Aravi and take you from will they, won't they to oh, they definitely will. The ability to craft cryptic personal inside jokes together or double jump. Double <laughs> jump! <laughs> it's double, double jump. jump. Go big, go home, double jump. Yeah! <laughs> nice. See? This is why I enjoy hanging out with you. A lesser person would choose some cheesy romantic hawk option but you get it the true adventurers know there's nothing on earth no metal no weapon no love no hate more powerful than the double, double jump, jump. <laughs> life is a metroidvania and i knew you were someone i could explore it with <laughs> oh, oh, that's oh, the cool oh that hurt my in our relationships <laughs> Ooh, like take a cooking class together, or sharing a Netflix account casually, or maybe not so casually. Oh, hey, I'm doing that. <laughs> Except it's Hulu. Also, uh... Sweats, dart, eyes dart around nervously, which I can do. <laughs> also, uh... <laughs> you may have noticed I'm not super tall. She is very short! <laughs> <laughs> So knowing someone with a double jump might help me reach things? I mean, if that's okay, you know, if you want to, whatever, I don't care. You tell Ravi that of course you will reach anything she wants. There is no zone in your relationship or in her shelf height that you are not happy to explore with her. 
Can you test your skill by getting the legendary bagel way, way, way up there in that spot that makes sense for our current location? Nice, thanks. The three of you spend the rest of the day adventuring with your double jump. You unlock cool new areas and then throw down a rope so Ravi can join you. By the end of the day, you've discovered boots of ambiguous sexual chemistry plus two in a lava cave and an amulet of intimacy plus three in an icy tundra. And gotten a kiss on the cheek in a pitch black underwater grotto. Aravi insists it was Hex, and Hex insists it was Aravi. You insisted hmm. it gave you two charm and one fun, and it did. Adventure awaits God, I have so much boldness. What do I need it for? So do I. Yeah, fuck it. That day in the haunted manor, a little clown man oh. rides a tricycle up to you and asks if you would like to play a game. Cool, you love hmm. games. You suggest Monopoly or categories. The clown man tells you to find the exit key in an hour, he's gonna rip all your skin off. You're not super into that idea, so you decide to, decide to compromise by going to an escape room and solving some puzzles together. It's lots of fun, but you don't gain fun here. You gain bold. You lose boldness instead. <laughs> nice. Later, you meet up with Joy. She said she wanted to spend the day, just the two of you. Your knees feel weak. Arms are heavy. There's vomit on your sweater already. <laughs> Mom's spaghetti. But that might be the polio you recently contracted. Oh, hey. Hmm. Thanks uh -oh. for meeting me here, Bisk. I wanted to apologize for all the drama with my exes lately. You've been so understanding, and I've been doing some thinking. Before Joy can finish, a strange purple slime hole opens up right in front of you. There uh -oh. are palpable waves of angst and resentment radiating out of it. Oh, shit. Well, well, well. If it isn't my ex-girlfriend, Joy Johnson Jojima, also known as the witch who drowned my heart in the insidian ink of emotional betrayal... Hey, Gerard. It's nice to see you, too, I guess. What are you doing here? And, uh, how oh, are you doing? Oh, it's <laughs> for my chemical okay. romance. Shh, I'm not okay, I promise. If you look in the mirror... And Bruh! It's literally... It's literally fucking... <laughs> it's just Gerard. He's it's still just Gerard. Going. Wait, that wonderful. Fucking... In the dark of twilight, I was looking into the mirror, and I did not like what I saw. So I began online shopping for the darkest shade of black eyeliner available. And I saw this post on my Insta feed. You're with Salome now, jo uh, now Joy, seriously? Yet another one of your ice cold treasons of passion. Another stab to the heart. <sighs> Holy shit, I am this close to deleting my Instagram. Not that it's any of your business, Gerard, but no, I'm not with Salome. I didn't give her permission to post that. Joy. Whatever. Whatever, you're just deceiving me again. It reminds me of when I was a young boy. My father took me into the city <laughs> to see city a lying whore named Joy. <laughs> hey, even though this guy God. clearly has an amazing fashion sense, you've got to step too. in. You tell Gerard that he needs to be respectful to Joy or you'll give him polio. <laughs> You're defending the soulless witch. You're my tale of woe, idiot. I consumed 1,891 living souls and became the most powerful necromancer in the universe just to impress Joy. Cheater. And she responds by getting all mad at me for killing innocents, and then cheating on me with some two-bit horny warlockless. She Joy is a cheater! Gerard, listen to me. I get why you're mad, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I was wrong to cheat on you when you were dating, and I'm sorry. But we dated a long time ago. It's been years since we broke up and the coven defeated you. I think it's unhealthy that you're still completely fixated on this. And also, I would appreciate it if you could stop commenting cheating ho with a rotting black heart on everything I post. Mm, perhaps you're right. I haven't feasted on an innocent soul in many fortnights. It's not like me. I'm losing interest in my hobbies. Since you were the grand arch Since you were the grand architect of my pain, I expect you'll have some method to sew my shattered psyche back together. I guess it's the least I can do. Bith and I will help you move on by by uh any ideas, Bith? Get Gerard a date. Getting laid won't heal his broken heart completely, but That's hey, it's fun. a start. It's time to get even. Joy and Gerard should play Monopoly together, and Gerard should be allowed to choy. Cheat. Fair is fair. <laughs> Babe? Uh, is bottom fun? Top charm? I think top's fun because of sex. You have a fucking guide. Yeah. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, one second. I forgot this was Yeah, oh like. <laughs> one second. I'm like, what do you I mean? Forgot why this was why are we guessing? <laughs> Oh, I haven't been guessing. Fun. Why are we guessing? You have the answers. <laughs> One second. I know I have the answers to everything. I, lose. I don't know that I'd go that far. Uh, top is charm, bottom is fun. Like I said. Okay, top charm, charm 10, bottom fun, yeah. fun 7. I forgot my fun isn't 1 anymore. Okay, charm, top charm, charm, charm. Yes. Oh, that charm. could I 
That could actually work. Thanks for suggesting an actual idea instead of extremely absurd, improbable, random bullshit. Gotta say, it's refreshing. What do you think, Gerard? Ready for a rebound? I'm not entirely opposed to the idea, but I refuse to lower my standards by even a millimeter. My new romantic partner Ugh, must be oh a my. true paramour. I mean paramour. No. Uh, fair enough. You this. asked Gerard to describe his ideal romantic partner. Uh, Guess I've never thought about it before, as my heartbreak has been far too consuming. But I know one thing. No more heroes. She must be evil through and through. My future so long, boo should be able to stare into the abyss of the cold, unfeeling universe. She knows death. Yep. She knows war. She is immortal beyond the human... This is... Oh my god. Oh my god. Is it's this going to be, be so a My Immortal reference? Also, I know it is somewhat kinky, but I would like to be able to suck her soul a little bit without causing it to collapse. Oh, this is hopeless. Such a goddess does not exist. Ooh, baby, you know the perfect match for Gerard. You whip up your phone and set him up with Fade, Fade Ralt, an ancient heathen deity of destruction. What? Ah, oh, damn, this Fade Ralt demon looks both evil and exciting. I'm off to my date. Enjoy, don't cry. I don't love you like I loved you yesterday. It's better. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I'm glad this I is causing this. you all pain. I don't know, I think... I think I know, like, one My Chemical Romance song, and I'm glad this is causing all of you such pain. Impressive. Wow, that yeah, is no, a I, I pain. Have, I'm you know, enjoying this. I haven't caught anything since the... All of this I, got, I, like I got the, the Black, Black Parade. Parade. I got the like, Black Parade. Yeah, the other one's the only one I got. So that was one, and then the first one was I'm Not Okay, I Promise. Which is, <laughs> which is another one, which is an older and one. And then yeah. I Don't Love You Like I Loved You Yesterday. It's another one for Black off Parade. The, yeah, off yeah. the Black Parade album. Wow, that was the happiest I've seen Gerard. Also, Paramore is also... Band well, they, yeah, no, I got, I got that yeah, one. Paramore, obviously. That was the happiest I've seen Gerard, and actually, that's the happiest I've ever seen him. I really hope he can move on. He's definitely evil, but deep down, I think there's some good inside of him. I've dated a lot of villains, and lately it's been really nice to have an ally of justice and truth by my side. We make a pretty good team, huh? Listen, Bifk, do me a favor. Close your eyes. OMG, oh. you have no idea what's about to happen, but your crush on Joy has never been this intense. You close your eyes. Your body's awash, awash with a warm, comfortable, pleasant sensation. Joy cast a spell on you. It cured, cured your polio, got you three creativity, and was hot as fuck. Congratulations, babe. So many Josh. Hey. Would well, you like to use, would you I like to lose, lose smarts or creativity? I want to lose smarts. Become dumb. That day while Reject hiking through the woods, you find a tree with the words J plus S forever carved on it. Aw. Then on another tree, you find Jay is a liar and a cheating hoe. That's less cute. Hey. Then on yet another tree, you say, S, I know you banged like 12 people abroad in Europe. Don't dish what you can't take. On the last tree, <laughs> S docks is Jay. It turns out Jay lives on the 7889 minus 2 smarts lane. Boy, you sure can learn a lot from trees. Later that night, you get all gussied up for your date with Dahlia. She said she had some intense physical activities planned. A wooga. A wooga. <laughs> However, when you go to find her, you're surprised to see her surrounded by a horde of demonic soldiers. Oh, hey, Josh, listen, I've got bad news. I forgot I volunteered to army sit my buddy General Exaxlar's hellish armies tonight. I'm sorry, I can't dodge this responsibility, but I'll make it up to you. Maybe you can help me watch them tonight. Right now I'm cooking them a nutritious meal of gruel and enemy blood formula. We couldn't get the fresh stuff on such short nose, but this powder substitute is pretty... As she's speaking, one of the soldiers pulls meekly on Dahlia's sleeve. Uh, um, Miss General Aquino, she says. I gotta go potty. Oh, uh, I told you all to go before we left hell. Fine, anyone who has to go, come with me and bring a towel to bury your poopies. Travel. Or travel. Yeah, that makes more sense. Also, I'm glad she just fucking quoted the uh, Mulan song just now. She says yeah. you're unfuted for the rage of war. Uh, Josh, may maybe you can figure out a way to entertain the little war machines while I'm gone. Then we might be able to spend some time alone, alone time together. Every day, this universe tests your patience. Well, whatever. If it means time alone, it means alone time with Dahlia. You can find a way to distract the giant evil darlings for an hour. What sort of activity should give you should you give the demonic soldiers to do so you and Dahlia can make love, not war? Put some soothing war propaganda on the TV to entertain and distract them. Keep them busy by giving them an assignment, a personal essay about their experiences with city pillaging. Hmm. 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 Bottom one is creativity, perhaps? Perhaps. Imagine guessing. Hmm. I mean, Boca doesn't have a complete guide. 
Yeah. And I don't think this one's a rare. No one does. Well, hmm. 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 Let's just go with the uh, essay. It was smarts. Oops. Ah, oh, well. Fuck. Run your idea past Dahlia when she yeah. returns. Hey, that's grand. It's fun, engaging, and educational. My fa three favorite things about war. You tell all the soldiers about their assignment. They get really excited and start talking to each other eagerly about what their essays are going to be about. You're ready to sneak off with your buff bay, but the soldiers keep coming up and bothering you two with inane questions about the assignment. Miss General Akira, says one, I wanted to write about the ransacking of Themyscira, but Astron said he's already doing it. Can we work in pairs? Miss General Akira, do slanderous propagandas of the enemy count as a credible source? Miss General Akira, can we use proper nouns in the assignments such as I, we, and those damned agents of Yahweh? <laughs> what are you asking me for? This is Josh's assignment. Ask him. Come on, Josh, we need to help them. Soldiers need lots of affirmation and encouragement with things like this, so they'll develop good people murdering skills. Ugh, you just wanted to bone, not do homework. You give a few more half-assed answers to the soldiers, and they finally finish the assignment. Great job, everybody. Now let's see what you cute little devils came up with. Um, I'm a little concerned about your interpretation of the birdie of the Temple of Baphomet, Gadderall. Wikipedia is not a valid source. And Halfoss, your theory thesis statement isn't clear at all. This is just a drawing of you stabbing an Atlantean. That was not the assignment. Hey, no, no, it's okay, guys. Don't cry. It's not your fault. Josh was very unclear on the rules of the assignment. This is all your fault, Josh. Don't you know how impressionable brainwashed soldiers are? You've ruined their understanding of pillaging and of MLA formatting. I've, now we've got to spend the rest of the night educating them properly. We'll have to go out some other time. You offer to help, Damn but it. you've done enough I thought damage. the bomb one might be smart because essays, but... Right. Oh, well. You probably should have paid more attention to Miss Panthera's essays on genocide class. You walk off in shame and lose two smarts in one fun. Oh, perfect! I lost more smarts. Yeah. yeah now you're dumb as the hell. Last day is Greg. Dumb I'm dumb as a box of rocks. All right. Final. Well, Greg, I assume. Hello, Greg. Someone else. I'm gonna Still try. Ready. I mean, it doesn't matter. Showtime. Boko. Me. Aravi, I assume. Pick someone else. Let's hope. Bifk. Bifk. <laughs> Josh. Yeah, ye. <laughs> Josh. You finally gather the courage and ask your beloved to watch the meteor shower with you. Uh, as, as a summer fling? Impossible! So oh. Oof. Oof. I'm a master strategist, and I know doom tactic when I see one. You and I would crash and burn. Now get out of here before I use you to towel off my sweaty back after I finish this rep. Oh man, That's that was fine. hard to watch. You got dumped um, by oh. your summer crush. You got so thoroughly and tragically dumped, the Merriam-Webster dictionary redefines being dumped as being joshed. Wow. And right next oh. to that word is a picture of oh. you sobbing into your ramen noodles. Yeah. Greg. Oh! Alright, Greg. Let's you finally see. gather courage and ask your brother to watch it, the meteor shower. I mean, I lose. <laughs> you want to- that's me. You want to be a summer fling, huh? Uh, uh, let me consult with the goddess first. Oh, goddess, I need- I come to you in need of divine advice. Ah, <laughs> ah, uh, uh, hey girl. Goddess, Greg is asking if we should date. Would this be advisable even if it interferes with my duty of saving the world and protecting you? Do as you want, babe. But goddess, if I do so, the world will crumble at the dangers of evil forces. Nah, you're being overdramatic. There's some sort of balance between good and evil. I think we'll do fine. Go follow your dreams. Uh, ah, uh, goddess, I think I'm losing you. The magic of the signal is weak. Your words are coming through all distorted. What are you saying? I'm saying that... All right. I lost connection to the goddess, but I think we can all agree she was about to say how bad of an idea it would be for us to date right now. I'm so sorry. We have zero chemistry. No! This is terrible. Why'd you take all those monster sound courses on surviving a bear attack? You should have taken the ones on surviving rejection. You are not ready for this. You weren't ready for a bear attack either, apparently, since one attacks you right after that, and you cannot do anything but get your whole face mauled. Let's start a you Boko. die! Playing the zombie. You finally gather courage ask your beloved on a date. Wait, you want to go to the meteor shower with me? No way! Hmm, I actually had this side quest. Why is the man telling me he needed me to watch the meteor shower with someone? He told me if I did it, he would give me three mana potions. Boggers. Yeah, totally legit side quest. So 
the only reason I agreed to go out with you. No other ones. I mean, you know that's probably a lie, but if this is Ravi's way of coping with her own feelings, you won't complain. The last day of camp was amazing. No. Oh. Shut up. Before the meteor shower, you and Aravi spend the whole day exploring nearby caves searching for gold or treasure. You fought lots of super dangerous creatures, and in a dramatic moment when a killer mind flayer had you in its clutches, Aravi swooped in to save you. Hex filmed the whole thing and put it on TikTok. Now the whole world knows you as Aravi's damsel in distress, and you're okay with that. Yay. Bifk. Yay. You go to check on your favorite witch. Hey, you. hey Bifk. What, you want to watch the meteor shower together? Uh, <laughs> I'm grateful for all your help these past few days, but I never really imagined us in that way. <laughs> But now that you bring it up, I gotta admit, I do like you quite a bit. I guess there wasn't that initial passionate spark, you know? Like a fire that lights in you in which you want to destroy someone, but also fuck their brains out. It happened with Axorak, Salome, Gerard, Dimitri, Liam when he was Angelus. What? Come to think, I sort of seem to have a pattern. And looking at it now, it doesn't seem super healthy. Do I always look for sexual partners in my enemies? Why? Looking at it from a distance, it seems like I sabotage myself, always entangling with evil people who don't exactly rhyme with commitment. But maybe I could break the cycle. Hmm. Would you want to break that cycle with me? Do you even need to answer? The meteor shower arrives and you share it with joy. You wonder if you may live to become an evil ex. The thought frightens you, but it is there. But what can we do besides try our best while we dive into the mortifying ideal of being known? The fear is there, real and blunt. But if we eventually fail, then in time, we will learn from every error. So tonight, you just hold hands with joy while gazing at the starry night and wondering about your shared future. And starts slowly, but it speeds up, as she's excited by the prospects of a new, less complicated way of doing things. And you? Let's make this You're night. deeply under her spell. Magical. You see her. You truly Aww. see her. A mesmerizing woman who loves unapologetically. A kind soul who's not afraid to lead with power and compassion. A deeply complex person who carries the weight of the world on her shoulders. Someone that... In the moments when she alleviates herself from all those responsibilities, can also be the true embodiment of joy. Ha, get it? Cause joy? Yeah. Cause that's her name. Uh, that's her name. Yeah. Boy, we have done so few things. <laughs> Cause we only played wow. this twice. I know. One and a half, two and a half times. Before we knew it, those weeks were gone. It felt like a hot minute, and it felt like an entire lifetime. That night, as we saw summer coming to an end, we all wondered what would come next for us. It felt like the end of something big. Little did we know, life still had many wonders and misadventures in store for us. Now I'm older, and I can see it, how those years became the foundation of the mythology of our lives. Broken hearts turned tragedies sung for centuries, wild nights became epics treasured forever. Every kiss and every laugh is now a constellation we'll always find while gazing into the starry night, no matter how many years go by. Even today, I can still close my eyes and I'm there. On that last summer night, I'm gonna wait a second, feeling like I was just starting to live life. With all my friends around that campfire. So young and unafraid. And so ready to start. Oh, this is cute. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really good ending animation. So yeah, that's Monster Camp. Fucking. <laughs> hey. I don't like the fish with teeth. What? Oh my god. Hey. At least I have friends. <laughs> right? At least there's a reason you lost. I have no fucking clue what I did wrong. You just didn't get enough hard points, I guess? Something like that. I guess Maybe, maybe you didn't have the stat requirement, because all of our stats got fucked. Yeah, I had double-digit boldness and fun, but I only had nine creativity. Yeah. Hmm. But I, I, I don't know. But I don't know what the stats are, so... Who knows? It was something was in something. there. But anyways, I'm gonna go to bed. Good night, Josh. Good night. Bye. I'm pretty Bye sure had I, not, had I not been on a secret ending, I'm fairly certain I would have failed, too. That was a rough one. I don't like that Bloody Mary potion. No, oh, that sucked. <laughs> that was quite yeah, bad. Rough times. Oh my god. A lot of, lot of rough times there. Also, are we streaming tomorrow? 
Uh, no. I'm working till midnight. Oh, okay. I am also working till 11. Roger Dodger. Then I'll see everyone later in the week. I'm off Thursday, as always. He's gone. I'm mm. on Tuesday, Wednesday. I didn't notice the twerking demon in the background there last time, but I didn't like it. <laughs> Best fandom ever. Good review means a lot to us. There. Drinks. Bees. Drinks. There's the bees drink. Oh my god. That's the one that turned me into Nicolas Cage. <laughs> This is a way cooler ending than the first one. Yeah. Because yeah. they have a much higher budget. Because they, they had money this time. Yeah. yeah. That song's not going to get us in trouble, is it? Eh. It didn't last so. time. Cool. As long as no one clips it. Don't clip it. Don't clip it? Good. I mean, it did get us claimed on YouTube, but they didn't take the video down, so fuck it. Cool. Oh, yeah. It's not like we're making money anyway. <laughs> yeah. So now that Josh is gone, you've I unlocked feel like I should flask... inform you that there's... You've just a... unlocked the flask genie. The what? You've unlocked mm. poison. You've unlocked the stat smoothie. What? I think the flask genie is another one of uh, Joy's endings, because I was, like, looking through things before we played. I, I feel like I should inform you guys that there is a Josh ending. So I'm guessing those are new. Uh, those are new what? drinks you can get at the drink bar. Ah, yeah. Probably. Uh, yeah, you un you probably unlock stuff the more you play, so that's pretty. There cool. is a secret ending called "Who Killed Cool Josh." <laughs> oh no! Not cool, Josh. Oh no! Not cool, Josh. Yeah, I can't. Anyway, cool, uh, that's gonna that's gonna do it for us tonight. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you Thursday, I guess, because my work schedule is bad. Bye. 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 Astral Chain will never come back.